Peace, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Peace, peace, everyone. Please let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me, okay? Let's see. Welcome, Skyrocket. Welcome, Ather. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Danny. Welcome, everyone, to this wonderful um, live we are doing tonight with Sister Myra Moss. Let me put the title up here. We're going to get started in just a few moments. I just want to give some time for um, people to get in, for them to get the alerts, to come on in the room. I see a lot of people joining now. There are two lives. One of them is a backup live, so I'm happy that you guys made it to this one. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Empress Sun, Melanated Nectar, Beautiful Mindset, Sarah Mother, Christelle. Welcome, Danny. Welcome to all the moderators that are here today. Welcome, April. Shout out to all the SDA students, Inner Circle students. Shout out to all the Sister Myra students that are here today. Shout out to all the SDA students, Inner Oops, Circle students. There we Shout go. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Again, I was going to wait a couple minutes for everyone to join or for more people to join. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, essential nature. Peace, Dana. Welcome. If this is your first live, we're going to have some fun tonight. I sent um, an email out. I also posted on my Instagram page for you all to watch. Um, Kendrick Lamar's video. I hope that you watched it. Let me know in the chat if you've seen the video already. Let me know in the chat. Just type yes. Let me know if you saw the video. This is this was like your pre-homework before Sister Myra gets on tonight. <laughs> the prep for what she's going to bring us tonight. Yes, I see a lot of people did see it. Awesome, awesome. If you didn't, it's all good. Um, she's going to give an amazing breakdown of it. Thank you, Anu. Thank you, thank you. I'm just going to wait for a few more people to join and then we'll begin. Oh, you heard the song? Awesome. Royal vibes up in here. Yes, we're claiming our throne. We are so excited to have sister, master teacher system. Okay, there we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so before we begin, we have about, um, I see 290 people in the chat. Um, can you guys hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me now. Give me a thumbs up or yes, let me know if you can hear me okay. Okay, awesome. Hey, Sin Goddess. So welcome, welcome to this amazing um, lecture that we are going to have tonight. It is called A Love Response to Kendrick Lamar's The Heart Part 3. Again, welcome to um, everyone that has joined in. Um, Sister Myra is going to prepare us, going to prepare us and going to share with us some amazing information that she received directly from Spirit. You're not going to get this information from anyone else because this was a direct channeled message to her. So make sure that you share this video. Um, we have taken certain precautions to make sure that it is being recorded and saved because you know, we know how, um, you know, <laughs> YouTube can be, but you know, we know better. So, um, but anyway, I, I do suggest that you do share this with, you know, your friends, family, um, 
just anyone you think that would resonate with this message, even if you don't think they would resonate with this message, share it with them. This is so important, which she's here to share with us tonight. I want to give a special um, shout out to Tiffany Powers. Tiffany Powers is actually a student of Sister um, Myra's as well. And she um, actually hosted this lecture with the same title and everything on her channel this past Thursday. However, there was an issue with YouTube. Her video was taken down. Um, I'm, I believe it's still um, on Spotify, but I'm not sure if it's still there. I think Sister Myers said that might have been taken down. But a shout out to um, Tiffany Myers as she was initially um, helping Sister Myers to prepare this message. And again, we know how things work, right? But um, it's all good. We are prepared. We have some um, spiritual warriors, you know, guarding and protecting us today so that this message can get out to as many of you as possible because it is needed at this time. So again, shout out to Tiffany Myers. Thank you so much um, for, you know, being a willing vessel and um, allowing Sister Myra to, you know, share her message to the public, to the soul family. So before we begin again, I do want to say that Sister Myra is um, open to do a Q&A at the end. Um, she loves doing Q&As. So if you have questions, you guys know how we do it. If you have questions um, at the end, you want to put question marks before your question so that I can differentiate a question versus a comment. And then um, I will select the questions that pertain to the message she is giving today. Okay. As long as it pertains to the message, I'll put out put a few questions on the screen, and then um, Sister Mara will um, answer a few questions with um, her energy uh, permitted. All right, so again, I'm so excited to present Sister Myra Moss. So everyone, um, send some love to the screen, send some protective energy as we welcome Sister Myra Moss on here tonight. Welcome, Sister Myra. Thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> Spirit Dula. Um, I'm happy to be here and um, very pleased that, you know, you you were uh, able to support this for us today. And like I said, shout out to Tiffany Powers because, um, you know, we're all in this fight together and um, and we're doing all we can to get out the information that we need for our, our family because... We love you. <laughs> so um, I really think this is an important uh, uh, message. This video, um, it kind of reminded me of, of the movie, The Matrix. Um, there was, uh, I think the movie, The Matrix is one of the most um, significant uh, movies we've had uh, when it comes to spiritual information, the symbolism. And, and what it really pertains to and what it really means. And I think that um, I get the same feel of this video um, with, with Kendrick Lamar. I think a lot of people are getting caught up in the uh, theatrics. They're getting caught up in, you know, the technology, uh, just like they did with the movie The Matrix. And uh, we're really missing the bigger um um, the bigger message behind it. And I mean, the message is huge um, because it's really putting us on notice that um, it's time for things to be fulfilled. It's time for us to step up to a new level. Um, and in order to do that, uh, you know me, I call myself a holistic. So it's all about balancing those opposites, two halves make a whole. And um, I think what this video uh, defines for us uh, is the physical half that we've completed and how we've gone through uh, the sacrifices, the struggles, um, what we have uh, endured when it comes to um, a spiritual wounding um, uh, through a generational wounding that has been uh, passed down. Uh, and um, now this video uh, indicates that um, we've completed that, that there's no more to go. It's time to heal. It's time to step up to a new level. And in order for us to do that, uh, we have to come into balance um, with the spiritual half of this operation. 
So that is what I'm going to break down. That's what I'm going to help you understand or hopefully help you understand about um, the full meaning of this video. There's a lot of code in it. Uh, not really meant for everyone. So it's um, this video um, demonstrates uh, many levels of how people are uh, viewing it. Um, you can tell uh, just how aware people are spiritually from how they're making their analyzation of the video. And um, very, very coded. Uh, and the more you crack the code, the more you'll see, uh, the bigger impact it'll have. So everybody's not going to see the same thing because everybody's not looking from the same level. I, I watched um, tons and tons of reaction videos. And I did that purposely because, you know, I really, I'm not a, um, um, a, a rap person. I'm not, you know, I, this is the first time I ever even heard of uh, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, and um, so it was good for me to get a perspective of what other people know, uh, what other people um, had to say about him. Um, and, um, and, um, by looking at these reaction videos, I was able to see um, what other people were not seeing, you know, that I was able to see, as well as what people were seeing that I was not seeing, as well as what information other people had that I didn't know. And so as I put all these pieces together, it was really uh, astounding, you know, the message and the information that opened up for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to set uh, the stage for um, how the information I've been dealing with has led up to um, what this video has um, shown me when it comes to um, the spiritual destiny and purpose that we are now uh, stepping up to. Um, so um, I want to start, of course, by acknowledging we are in Gemini energy um, or if um, or either tomorrow or very soon going into Gemini energy. And that's very um, strategic because uh, that is the sign of, uh, of uh, Kendrick Lamar. He is a Gemini and uh, Gemini is our energy of natural channeling. I mean, that's the, the natural channel, channeler. That's the master channeler uh, when we talk about Gemini. So wherever your Gemini is at is where you're, you you do channel. Uh, and um, I have a Gemini moon. And the moon is always connected to uh, mama. Uh, it's the first level of how we access the energy of mama. Um, you know, because it's the first planet, it's the closest planetary body, the moon, and the moon represents cancer energy, you know, and we're going to look at this from the perspective of energy. So the moon represents cancer energy and cancer energy represents our ancestors. Whenever we're dealing with cancer, we're dealing with the ancestors and that's always the water element, which is, um, another vibration of mama, big mama. She is the ancient of ancients. There's four members of the royal spiritual family of energy. And we are the individual vessels at ground level. We have a soul level, we have a spirit level, and we have the physical level. We are the physical vessels that are at ground level uh, through the melanin that can activate uh, our vibration um, in harmonization of energy um, to the highest levels, um, you know, through that harmonization. Uh, so the higher you can take your vibration as an individual vessel, um, spirit is spiral, um, you know, so to the level you can take it up is the level you will receive back in opposite return. That is my premise. This is why I call myself a holistic Two halves make a whole. So anywhere you can balance opposites, that is where you're uh, completing the spiral 
And that is when you open up a vortex. That is when you activate the energy from the higher levels of the universe. So anytime we complete a spiral, that gives us access to the next level where we start a new spiral, but at a higher vibration, only for access to the next level. So this is an infinite process of transformation, regeneration, and evolution of spiritual rulership. Um, and anytime we get into the Aquarian age, uh, we've balanced on enough levels to evolve to a new level with Aquarius being the sign of evolution. So it's time for our evolution. And um, in order to do that, we have to complete one half. Energy can only go 180 degrees. It can only go 180 degrees. Uh, when it has to be balanced with the opposite 180 degrees, which is how we complete a 360 degree spiral. Uh, that completes the um, spiral. And that is, well, we open up a vortex for access to the next level of energy vibration. So we have now with this video, what it is indicating is that um, uh, Kendrick has exposed the uh, physical completion of one half of this operation, um, how we have been wounded and those wounds have been generationally passed down. And anytime we're doing anything um, collective, that's spiritual. So we're talking about the wounding generationally passed down through our ancestors. These are the wounds that has to now be exposed at the physical level. They have to be manifested and materialized at the physical level so they can be identified, uh, cleansed out, purged in order for us to heal and step up to this new rulership. Aquarius is the sign of uh, evolution. Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian. And like I said, I call myself a holistic, so I don't actually believe in 12 signs anymore. Uh, because every time we break it down uh, to individual aspects, that is the physical. Physical is individual, spirit is the collective. So you have to pull energy to create the spirit. That's why they say we're more than one is called in my name. So shall I be father spirit. Um, so we we are now fulfilling a uh, half where um, that wounding, that generational wounding has been passed down, now being exposed in order to be cleansed. And this is how we will now activate the opposite response in equal measure uh, through the spiritual return. So um, there's always an opposite reflection. Um, the, um, so when I say holistic, not 12 uh, signs anymore, now I only like to look at six axes of energy, six axes of energy. Uh, it's not until you put the two halves or opposites together that you get the whole. So um, I go, um, so you go Aries, um, which is on the physical half, and its re spiritual reflection is Libra. Um, so the air and fire works together as well as earth and water works together. And the one that's really dominant right now, of course, because the sun is in, well, then we have Taurus which we're just leaving now, uh, leaving the Taurus uh, energy, wherever the sun is focusing the energy from the universe. Uh, the sun always indicates the focus, what's being highlighted, what's being focused on. So now the focus uh, from uh, the Taurus, um, the physical reflection of the spiritual Scorpio. Then we have uh, Gemini, uh, the physical reflection of the spiritual Sagittarius. And then we have Cancer, the next cardinal. Aries is the first cardinal sign, the cardinal fire, and it represents the prince. The cardinal signs are going to represent the royal energy. Uh, so the cardinal fire, the prince 
of the royal family is Aries, and his domain of rulership is over Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. Uh, the warrior, Aries, uh, who defends uh, the value, Taurus. Uh, the energy of values is Taurus. So the warrior who defends the value of seeing through the illusion, which is Gemini. Gemini is the sign of discernment, uh, being able to discern between the um, uh, physical illusion versus spiritual reality, uh, the Gemini gateway. Uh, when we see uh, in the metaphysical movies, you'll see the warrior, Aries, uh, in the boat going through um, uh, the Twin Towers. And the Twin Towers represents the Gemini gateway. And if he doesn't go through that Gemini gateway, in full discernment, um, you'll see beams of light come and strike them down. Um, we'll strike them down and you'll see all kind of bones around that gateway uh, because you have to be able to discern between what's real in the physical, I mean, in the spiritual and what's false in the illusion. And right now they're pulling out all stops in the illusion. Um, to um, one of the first things I wanted to say is we got to stop giving in to the distractions. Um, they're doing everything they can. Uh, you know, they're like those that big balloon, you know, outside of those car um, uh, lots, you know, that uh, waving their arms in the air, with flopping around. This is um, what the systems are doing right now. They're doing all this theatrics. Uh, to get us to focus at that level. Um, and most of the stuff that they're putting out there is not real. Um, all of it, most all of it is false flags. All, most all of it is false flags. Believe me, it's not real. It's just them distracting us from what we should be looking at because big things are opening up for us right now. Uh, but it's in the opposite of what they're trying to get us to focus on. So we had the cardinal section of the, of the the chart from Aries to Gemini. That's the most dominant energy right now. That's the uh, um, domain of rulership we're in under the prince, Aries. Then we reach the next cardinal sign of Cancer, which is the queen of the royal family, uh, Cancer. Um, and that domain of rulership is Cancer, um, and then we go to Leo, and then we go to Virgo. So that's what Cancer's domain of rulership is over um, the queen um, dealing with um, um, Leo and Virgo. And anytime we put Leo and Virgo together, we have um, segment energy, the most destructive energy of the universe. And we also have the Sphinx, the body of the lion, the head of the woman. Everything is about symbolism. The reason, the way you understand spiritual messages is to understand uh, the symbolism. That's um, the language of spirit, uh, symbolism. So, and then we get to the next cardinal sign where we go above the horizon line, now into the spiritual half of the cycle, uh, you know, where we um, then um, the cardinal sign um is air, the cardinal air, Libra, which will represent the king of the royal family, uh, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. That is that domain of rulership under the king. Uh, and then we get to the next cardinal sign of Capricorn, which is the princess, um, the cardinal earth. Uh, however, the princess has only just stepped up to her sacred status because she's the one that's been uh, rejected. Anytime we're dealing with earth, we're dealing with values. So she's been the one most rejected in her value, uh, starting with Capricorn, the cardinal earth, uh, over uh, Aquarius and Pisces. And we make that full circle back to the Aries again. So we have Aries, uh, physical face of Libra, the spiritual Libra, Taurus, the physical face of the spiritual Scorpio. Gemini, the physical face of the spiritual uh, Sagittarius. And then we get to the next cardinal sign, Cancer, 
which is the physical face of the spiritual Capricorn. And then we get to um, um, Leo, uh, the physical face of the spiritual uh, Aquarius, and then uh, Virgo, the physical face of the spiritual Pisces. So we have six axes of energy and two halves make a whole. And when you're only looking at one sign, it's like you're only looking at one half of a sentence. Uh, take Aries and Libra, for example. Aries, the warrior, Libra, the peacemaker. If you separate them, you have Aries running all, around, all over town, kicking butt, and uh, Libra uh, trying to keep the peace, no backbone. And it's not until you put the two together, you have a warrior who takes a stand for justice or takes a stand for peace. So putting the two together in balance is how you get the full scope of what they're each pertaining to. So a warrior for justice and all the signs work in those pairs. Um, so um, holistic, that's what we're gonna look at, uh, who we are holistically. Um, and we have to complete those spirals in order to activate the next level of spiral. And the first spiral you complete is with your own spirit. Um, so if your sun sign um, is Aries, then your spiritual sign is Libra. If your sun sign is Taurus, your spiritual sign is Scorpio. That's the way it goes. It goes in that type of balance. So the first balance would be with your own spirit and that will bring you to your individual wholeness or your individual Christhood. That is what will step set up the next cycle uh, for the next level. Uh, it's all a multitude of levels. So you have the individual level, then you step up to the couple level, you'll step up to the uh, family level, you'll step up to your community level, you know, and then it goes all the way up to your city, your state, you know, all of the nation. Um, right now, um, where we're getting the biggest um, um, opposition is at the global level. Uh, right now, we're at the global level where uh, all the systems of the world has become corrupted. And I mean every last one. There's not one system you can trust at this time. Uh, they all become corrupted to a global level, which is fortunate news for us because the next level after the global level is planetary level. And that is where we get into Big Mama's domain. And Big Mama, you know, is going to step to the table when uh, it's time to protect uh, the planets because uh, that's her children. The planets are her children, especially daughter Earth. Remember you guys, it's not mother Earth, it's daughter Earth and mama universe. And daughter Earth is her precious, um, that precious stone, you know? So, um, so as they carry this corruption to uh, surpass a global level to a planetary level, that is when um, we, be, we bring Big Mama to the table. And Big Mama is, um, you know, um, the mama of us all. Uh, and, um, you know, and she looks toward us as the vessels on ground zero, ground level, uh, to be able to channel the energy uh, she's too omniscient to come down here and take care of her family on her own. So she has to rely on um, us as her vessels um, to be able to channel that energy um, from that level in order to manifest it and materialize it at ground level. This is how we're stepping up as the new rulers, being able uh, to channel from our spiritual loved ones, uh, which are the um, uh, ancestors who made their transition in this lifetime, the ones we're conscious of, they're on the front line. Um, uh, Kendrick dealt with this. This is going to be part of what we're going to deal with with that uh, video because 
Um, we're dealing with our spiritual ancestors on the front line, uh, ready to um, guide the energy from the universe, from Mama Universe, you know, um, uh, for our benefit. Um, so uh, some chose to be on the other side spiritually to anchor it down at this time of fulfillment, while some of us chose to stay on the physical half and anchor it down from this end. Um, they, um, because it's about the balance, anywhere you can balance opposites is where you create wholeness. So now we're expanding that balance from the spiritual realm to the physical realm. And we do that through our connection to our spiritual loved ones and our spiritual ancestors. Uh, they're on the front line, uh, guiding that energy personally for each one of us, you know, um, um, and then we also have our soul ancestors, which are our ancient ancestors. And we now have also have access uh, to channel from them as well. And what we're channeling is our creative powers that they have mastered on. And now they're ready to channel that to us so we can materialize and manifest it at the physical level as we balance between uh, the physical collect uh, that physical with the spiritual that is opening up another level of vortex. Anytime we balance those opposites, we're opening up another level of um, fulfillment and opening up that vortex. Um, so this is pretty much what we're going to deal with. You know, we're going to deal with uh, the three levels that we're now um, accessing, able to access for energy uh, to balance uh, in opposition uh, to the completion of the sacrificial struggle half of this process. This has been an alchemical process. You see, turning what is base into gold, refining, turning uh, mortals into immortals. That is what this has really been all about. It's all about spirals of energy. Energy has to unfold through a negative and positive polarity. There has to be a dual balance of opposites in order for energy to be fulfilled. So um, the pain is connected to the gain. You know, no pain, no gain. And to the same extent, the pain will be the same extent the gain. Um, always the darkest before the dawn, uh, which means we have to completely get through the worst in order to get to the best. As well as, and I find this very strategic, as bad as it's been is as good as it's about to get because we're going to always have to deal with an opposite reflection one visible one hidden one subconscious one conscious as above so below as within so without all those two halves has to be balanced before we see the fulfillment of that energy and um so um uh, the balance of those opposites. So this is where our spiritual loved ones who have made their transition that we're conscious of, now they're on that spiritual end of this operation in order to bring that balance from that level, from the spiritual to the physical level. So they just, um, you know, when we took our purposes and our missions as energy beings, we actually took it as a family unit and we've had many lifetimes with our family members and our loved ones um, playing different roles in different lifetimes. So we use different bodies in different lifetimes to play these roles uh, to master in each lifetime and the purpose we came here to serve. And we did it, um, you know, um, especially when I talk about, um, you know, the twin souls, I talk about it in the way that, um, you had to have um, balance with your twin soul on an unequal basis. In some lifetimes you came together as say mother and son, and some lifetimes you came together as father and daughter. Um, but this is the lifetime to come together as brother and sister. The brother and sister is the mate level, the yin yang level, where those two halves that were in, in an imbalance are now 
have come, now come into balance as the brother sister or the mate level where the two halves have become equal and now can come together as one or whole holistic it's not real and this is whole and you're not going to be able to access under the next cycle until you've completed the prior whole whole your holistic cycle so um so you've played many roles through many lifetimes with your loved ones because, and this is one of the things I'm going to talk about, which is also covered in the, in the video, um, is <clears throat> this is why we have to love our loved ones, our family unconditionally. And I know there's a lot of debate about that word unconditional love um, because they've screw, uh, you know, give, given you a, um, you know, not a real definition. When we're talking about unconditional love, we're talking about uh, not just accepting anything anybody want to do to you or throw at you uh, as unconditional love. That's not what that means. Uh, what it actually means is that uh, we're not going to sit in judgment of our loved ones because we're on different levels. And they agreed um, to play that negative polarity so you could be the beneficiary of the positive return. That's the only way energy unfolds, through a negative and positive polarity. So in order to master in the purpose, you know, we came together as a family and decided what role we were going to play in each lifetime, who was going to play the negative polarity so that there could be a spiritual benefit, uh, beneficiary. And... Um, We've done this through many lifetimes, and now this is the lifetime since going into the Aquarius age of evolution. It's now time uh, to do our final um, balance through that negative and positive polarity. So our family playing their ultimate role as a negative polarity so we could bring back in benefit uh, that spiritual return. They're not conscious of it. This is not of the conscious realm. This was done in the subconscious realm. So it's not something they're going to know they're doing or you're going to know uh, what they're doing. Um, that is why we do not sit in judgment because right now the earth is under the, the lowest uh, vibration ever uh, because we're the darkest before the dawn and it's under the lowest vibration. And those who are not um, of that Zion factor or that mustard seed, those that are not, have not raised their vibration um, to the level uh, to activate their royal purpose, um, they are under the most stringent um, pressure there is from this low level vibration. Uh, so we can't sit in judgment of them. Our role is to um, activate our powers from the royal level and then bring it back full spiral uh, to benefit our physical family uh, in the in the form of uh, cleansing them, um, healing them, and protecting them. Um, that is how we get our practice as to um, the power we're stepping up to by uh, first using it with our family. Uh, to benefit them, and that is also going to give us the security to know that we do have that power when we see how this energy is working for the sake of our loved ones. And once we do that, uh, then we can um, no longer have to look over our shoulders in concern with our loved ones. Um, we know we got them protected, so we can then uh, elevate to higher and higher levels of the purpose we're here to fulfill. Um, for the sake of daughter earth. So um, this prelude, um, setting the stage for you to understand as I start breaking down the meaning of um, the, uh, the heart part five, um, for you to really uh, be able to understand is why I wanted to give this backdrop um, to um, so you can correspond uh, the meaning and the messages to the larger purpose that's being served, uh, the larger purpose uh, that's being fulfilled. Um, but the first thing I want to do 
is, um, you know, um, acknowledge or honor the um, the Gemini energy because that's uh, the one that is opening up for us now. This last cycle, we're going to see an enhancement of uh, the full energy, uh, the fullness of what energy is now showing itself for us. So um, I had to go and pull out old information, you guys. I had to pull out information that I was delivering uh, over 20 years ago because we have come full circle and now it's time to connect, you know, um, the beginning with the end uh, in order for the end to make sense to us. So um, this is something I did and it's interesting. Um, I did this in Harlem, New York, the material I'm about to re 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 read to you now. And it's funny because I did this on May 22nd, uh, 2005. And uh, so the, this is me pulling that information out because we're going to go full circle here uh, because Gemini right now is the most strategic energy, you know, being that uh, Kendrick Lamar is a Gemini. And I happen to believe that that was important for him to be able to bring us this message because Gemini is the master channeler. Now, remember, people, you have everything in you. You have all the signs in you, a full universe of energy within you. Your sun sign is only the energy you came into this lifetime to focus through. Sun is always the focus. Wherever the sun is at is where the energy is focusing. So you came in here in this lifetime to focus through the energy that represents your sun sign. But you have all of it in you. It's a matter of where they show up. Like I said, I have a Gemini moon, um, which means I channel uh, from um, the moon or mama when it comes to what she's feeling. You know, that's how mama speaks to us internally through how we feel the water element. And she also speaks to us from our ancient memory. Mama is the ancients of ancients. Everything started matrix oracle. All colors come from the color black, original black mama universe. That is why our ancestors came out as the original rulers and they had powers. This is who they are patterning superheroes after um, in this lifetime is our ancestors uh, because they could fly. They could breathe underwater. They could talk telepathically. It's the, plant, the animals, the plants, the universe, each other. And we still have those powers. However, that is part of the subconscious realm. Mama's domain. Father deals with the conscious realm. The air element. Mama deals with the subconscious, which is our ancient memory. Um, that was the major oracle society when we had the magic. You know, when we had the powers uh, coming out as the originals from uh, uh, Black Mama Universe, that was Matrix Oracle and Spirit is Spiral. So then it spiraled around to the Patriot Oracle half. That's where things became external. The Matrix Oracle represents the, uh, the, the feminine, internal, earth and water element. And then the... Uh, when it spiraled around to the Patriot Oracle half, that's when it came became the air and the fire. Uh, that's the masculine, that's the external. Um, so spiraled around to the masculine, external, um, air and fire half of that uh, um, that operation, that's, that, that spiral, that circle. There's four members of the royal family of spiritual energy at the highest universal level of vibration. There's only four members of that royal family. Um, and we look at those four members, their characteristics through the four elements. So we, when we go to uh, the masculine, the air and fire, we're gonna start with uh, the air element or the father component, <coughs> father spirit. Um, 
the air element who speaks to us externally through how we think, the mind. Um, he speaks to us through how we think or mentally. That is how we're influenced through Father Spirit. And he's righteous Father Spirit. And since air deals with the mind, that is the role of Father Spirit to produce a collective righteous mindset. That is his responsibility to create a, a collective righteous mindset. Anytime we're dealing with the spirit, we're dealing with the collective. Anytime we're dealing with the physical, we're dealing with the individual. And two halves make a whole, balancing from one end to the opposite end. It's um, So we have to do that dual balance of opposites. Then also external masculine is the fire element, which is the sun component. S-O-N, the individual melanated man. Um, the, the highest creative powers of the universe is through that melanated man, through the fire element as the sun component, the most creative. That's our creative powers when we're dealing with the fire element, our creative powers. S-O-N, the individual, and S-U-N, the planetary level of that energy as a collective. But then it goes up even, you know, it, we just complete spirals for the next level. So it, when we're dealing with the fire, when we go from the sun, uh, the next fire planet will be Mars. You know, the next fire planet will be Jupiter. So you follow that line, you know, up through those different levels uh, for that uh, fire um, energy. So the sun component, you know, from the individual uh, melanated sun um, as the melanated man. Um, and this is really tapping into what Kendrick is exposing for us as well. Um, and then um, he speaks to us through our passions, our desires. Like I said, at the highest vibration, the fire represents our creative powers. Now, notice I'm saying masculine, feminine, not male, female, because you have it all in you. When I say he, I'm only talking external. When I say she, I'm only talking internal. So um, that's the masculine half, the air and fire. And um, without the melanin, that's the only half that we're aware of because the air, the father represents the conscious mind. So this is where we access the conscious mind. You know, it's the consciousness uh, of this reality. And, um, and this land of illusion, that's what it's based in. So this is why they can only deal with the air and the fire. And we've accepted other people's reality as ours when ours surpasses that uh, because we're a holistic people and the universe is about balance. So since we've only been uh, programmed through that half consciously, um, we're only aware of the father-son component of this royal family. But the universe is about balance. And that means if there's a father, there has to be a mama. If there's a son, there has to be a daughter. But these are the hidden, um, the feminine, uh, and they're hidden internally as well as they're hidden subconsciously. So we have those powers that our ancestors had However, they are subconscious. We have to access those powers to the subconscious. So um, we start with the water, and we all know that's the mama component. You know, um, on the physical, um, 
mother, but the highest vibration will be identified as mama. Okay? So, because mother means to smother. Put an S in front of mother. And energy unfolds from mother to son, which is the physical half, and then from father to daughter, which is the spiritual half. Everything is symbolisms. And everything is levels. And everything will take a new face depending on what level you're looking at that energy at. So mother, son, father, daughter. Energy unfolds from the highest level of the universe uh, through that pairing. It's like black mama universe whose magic is hidden and exposed through the sun. S U N. He exposes through the sun. And then uh, the sun then resurrects into righteous father's spirit, the air element, where we get into the spiritual half, um, who then redeems or restores the value of daughter earth or daughter character. When we're dealing with the earth highest vibration of the earth element, we're dealing with Capricorn, the cardinal earth sign, which is the sign of character and integrity. So she is the one who, like I told you, has only recently received her crown, her royal status as the princess. We've had the king, Father Spirit, we had the Queen, Mama Universe, we've had the Prince, the Son of Power. The only one who hadn't gotten her sacred status was Daughter Earth, or Daughter Character, because she is the energy of character. And that is not respected in the land of illusion. Character is not respected in the land of illusion. So that is how she became the rejected stone, who becomes the cornerstone. It's in her rejection and redemption, the earth is transformed. Daughter earth or daughter character uh, as the individual melanated man represents the collective son, S-U-N, so does the individual melanated woman represents the earth energy, daughter earth, daughter character. Being put at the bottom of the totem pole in her value, earth is value. She's been undermined in her value because she is the energy of character and character is not respected in the land of illusion. So that is how she became the rejected stone who becomes the cornerstone. It's in her rejection and redemption, the earth is transformed. So princess of the royal family, but since she only became crowned at this last winter solstice, We've only just completed the full royal family of that energy. And when we completed that family of energy um, and see the earth, like I said, she deals with values. She deals with healing. Uh, earth deals with, um, uh, she deals with character. But most of all, the highest vibration of earth is security, being secure from within, since this is internal. So being secure internally. And mama, mama speaks to us internally through the water, through how we feel from our ancient memory. She is the one who reminds us of who we are in our holistic persona, our universal persona. You have to go internal to connect to the universal whole. That is how you bring that energy up through your chakras, all the way up to your crown chakra. This is where it then connects to mama universe. And this is how she speaks to you internally, giving you a full perspective of who you are holistically or cosmically, uh, rather than only seeing uh, the illusion of who you are you know, only from uh, a physical, mental perspective. So um, now we, uh, yeah, Mama Universe, uh, she is also Mama 
So she's Mama um, Magic. First two letters of magic is Ma, where father deals with logic and reason. Mama's the opposite. She deals with magic. You have to embrace uh, father in knowing where you embrace mama in faith and trust because it goes beyond your knowing. It goes beyond your logic and reason. And if you're trying to figure it out and logic and reason it, you know, it's defeating what mama's trying to prove to you. She wants to prove the magic of the universe to you. But we're so stuck in, a, in the head that we think we should be able to figure out you know, and know for ourselves. And if you think you can figure it out for yourself, what do you need mom's magic for? It's where we surpass. You don't blend energy. We have to complete one half before we access the opposite half. So we've completed the masculine half, the air and fire, the knowing as to what to do with our passions or our power, the fire. That's come to a completion. You don't straddle the fence. Now you have to come over and embrace mama in faith and trust. It goes beyond what you know. It goes beyond your logic and reason. It goes beyond you figuring it out. We're now beating a dead horse. We all know everything we need to know now. Our spirit has already given us all the information we need to know. Now it's time to utilize that knowledge. Walk in that knowing. Not continue to figure it out. To, to, to look outside of you for others to debate. Father brings information to the table, the air element. It's the mama who serves it up. They have to work in union. Father's spirit and mama's soul has to be balanced in order to become whole or holistic. And it's not real until it's whole. Anytime you're looking at a part of the whole, that's the illusion. So now that daughter earth has finally, you know, been crowned in her sacred status as the princess and the high priestess, because when she... Um, was offered to this uh, illusionary reality, um, she became that rejected stone that was put at the bottom of the totem pole in her value in the physical illusion. Because in the opposite, in the spiritual, if she's at the bottom physically, that means in the opposite spiritual, she is of the highest value. She is the high priestess. She represents the 12 o'clock hand. Capricorn at the winter solstice is like the 12 o'clock hand of the astrological cycle. That's where we complete a cycle and start a new one at a higher vibration. And the planetary ruler of Capricorn is Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of karma. He's the planetary level of the father. He's the one that takes down those who've abused their power and lifts up those who've been abused because that's the only sin spiritually is the abuse of power. There's a multitude of sins physically, but physically is op physical is opposite the spiritual. And in the spiritual, there's only one sin, the abuse of power. So that is um, where she's been put at that bottom of the totem pole um, and when she comes in at the winter solstice, it was crowned at this winter solstice. Whenever we go into Capricorn at the winter solstice, we're also bringing Saturn, the father, the Lord of karma. Um, he is what they talk about when they talk about the return of the king or the return of the father. That's what they're talking about. The Lord of karma. He is the one who will reconcile the balance of opposites, taking down those who've been abusive and lifting up those who've been abused. So that is, we're talking about the bigger scenario. We're the big, the individual aspects of this larger universal purpose that is now being fulfilled. 
So being put at the bottom of the totem pole, in the opposite, she is of the highest spiritual value as the high priestess and the princess of the royal family. And when she was ordained in her uh, sacred status on uh, December 21st, the winter solstice, um, that completed us as a star system. And now she can go into balance, marriage, a partnership with Anubis of the Sirius star system, which is our ancient power. So this is how we're balancing the new age Aquarius rulership or power with the ancient um, Sirius power or rulership, our ancestor rulership now in balance with this new age rulership, but only after daughter earth stepped into her sacred status as the princess of the royal family. So now it's time to evolve and become holistic and evolve to the level where we can now balance with the Sirius star system, our ancient power. And I got some more information on that. That's mind blowing. Um, so I'm going to read this paper that I, um, I actually read this in Harlem, New York on May 22nd, 2005. That's when I first, you know, put together this material. And it says on August the 11th, 1999, there was a fixed cross in the universe. Um, okay. I know I've been doing a lot of prelude before I read this. But there's one other thing I want to talk about before I do read this, now that I brought up the fixed cross. There's three cross levels. Like I said, we got to become holistic in order to step up to this new level. And the first way we start that is to balance with the opposite, with our own spirit, for one thing, our opposite energy, which brings us to our individual wholeness. The next level we have to step up to when it comes to stepping up to a universal flow of energy is we have to step up to the cross levels. And there are three cross levels that are doing the major influence on what's going on on the earth. That's what I do. I call myself an energy master because I study the configurations of the planets in the universe and how that energy um, influences on the earth or daughter earth. So the three cross levels we have to look at, we start with the cardinal cross. I did describe that a little earlier. Aries, the cardinal fire, opposite Libra, the cardinal air, and Cancer, the cardinal water, and Capricorn, the cardinal earth. Those are the four cardinal signs. Those are the royal signs. Those are the ones that have access to the higher royal level vibrations of the universe. The, this is the cross that will energize a new level of energy at the highest vibration uh, from uh, the royal level of the universe. So it's the cardinal signs that activated a new rotation of energy from a higher royal level of the universe. That is the cardinal cross. The prince with Aries, the cardinal fire. The queen with cancer, the cardinal water. Libra, the king, the cardinal air. And Capricorn, the princess, the cardinal earth. And after the cardinal sign activates and initiates this new level of royal energy from the universe, then the fixed cross will then be uh, activated. Um, the fixed cross will then take charge. I call this the cross of crucifixion. I call this the four horses of the apocalypse, the fixed cross. This is the one that does the major heavy work. This is the one that acts as the, the enforcement, the army, you know, of what the Cardinal Cross 
activates the fixed cross is what will enforce that energy. <clears throat> it is the one that will do the reversal. It is the one that will reverse that energy out of the physical, mundane, material illusion of reality to a spiritual, creative, royal um, um, rulership. Um, that is what the fixed cross will do. And that is Taurus opposite Scorpio and Leo opposite um, Aquarius. That is why it's one of the most dominant right now because of going into the Aquarius age. And that is what really activated that fixed cross, you know, going into the Aquarius age. Um, because like I said, we go from one end to the opposite end. And Aquarius is the sign of evolution. And in order to evolve, we have to balance that with Leo, the creative ruler. Leo is the sign of the creative ruler. So Aquarius is the sign of, I know, an evolution. So the evolution and our knowing as that we are the creative rulers of the universe. You got to know that in order to activate. If you don't know it, you don't have it. That's the premise of the matrix. When they took Neil to the Oracle, he trying to identify his power through his ego, doubted his power. And the Oracle said, nope, 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 you're not the one. I don't know what you're waiting on, your next life or whatever. And she points to the sign above the door, know thyself. If you don't know you're the one, you're not the one. You got to know you're the one before you become the one. That is the Aquarius and Leo axis of energy. I know I am a creative ruler in order to step up to that rulership. If you don't know it, you don't have it. If you believe they can get you, then they can get you. If you know they can't touch you, then that's when you become hammer time. Okay? They can't touch this. I'm hammer time. But you have to know that. So that is what that Aquarius um, age opened up. Our knowing and our evolution as the new age rulers, the evolution of a new age rulership as we come to the knowing of who we are as the creative rulers of the universe. Then we get the horizontal leg of that fixed cross. And that is the one most you know, personally, we're feeling right now because of the Taurus energy and the sun been in Taurus. So that is the horizontal leg of that fixed cross. So in order for us to evolve Aquarius as the new age rulers, Leo, there has to be a transformation, Scorpio. Scorpio is the sign of transformation. The death of the old, rebirth of the new for a higher level. The old has to go in order for the new to blossom. Uh, Scorpio is the sign of death and rebirth. And um, the planetary ruler of Scorpio is Pluto, the planet of regeneration. And this is an infinite process of transformation, regeneration, and evolution of spiritual rulership. This is an infinite process of that. Whenever we get into the Aquarian age, we've balanced on enough levels for that evolution. We've, but we have to make a transformation. And its opposite sign, Taurus, is the sign of values. So a transformation of our values and our habits. Taurus is the sign of habits and values. So a transformation of values in order to evolve Aquarius as the new age rulers, Leo. That is what the fixed cross is bringing to the table. It's the one that reverses that energy into that rotation. And then the last claw, cl cross, last but not least, is the mutable cross. And like I said, as we leave Taurus going into Gemini, we're going to start feeling this one. 
as much. And because the four signs for the mutable cross are Gemini, opposite Sagittarius, and Pisces. Excuse me, Virgo, opposite Pisces. You got to keep everything in order. Keep it all in order, especially when you're dealing with astrology. Um, so um, Virgo, opposite Pisces. And that is the mutable cross. So what the cardinal cross activates and initiates, the fixed cross sets into motion, the mutable cross will adapt this new level of energy to a whole new level of reality in the universe. This is when we're dealing with the magical component because we're dealing with the threes. Three is the number for magic. Uh, Gemini, the third sign. Virgo, the sixth sign. Sagittarius, the ninth sign. And Pisces, the twelfth sign. I actually call Pisces the fairy godmama of the Cinderella story. The one that brings the magic to Cinderella. And daughter Earth is Cinderella. Another level of Cinderella. Um, so the servant girl who ends up marrying the prince and becomes the queen from the bottom to the top. Uh, so the magic, um, the threes, you know, so, and then we're dealing with Mercury, Mercury on the physical level, and Mercury is the magician of the um, planetary energy. Um, so Mercury rules both Gemini and Virgo, which are the two physical in on the physical end uh, when it comes to those mutable signs. So uh, the messenger of the three realms, Mercury is the one that brings messages from the soul realm, the spirit realm to the physical realm, all three levels. And um, then we deal with Sagittarius. That's a SARS energy. Sagittarius is the energy of a SAR, the last fire sign ultimate power, collective power. And the planetary ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter. And anything Jupiter touches, it brings in abundance. We all get our blessings through Jupiter. It's the great beneficent. And we all get our blessings through Jupiter. And, but it's the ruling planet of Sagittarius, which is a very optimistic energy. And if you're not optimistic with it, you'll go right up under it. So you have to be vibrating at a high level to tap into your blessings, the Jupiter. But since it, anything Jupiter touches, it brings in abundance. And we're dealing with the fire of Sagittarius. So the abundance of fire, the ultimate sun of power. That is why he represents the Tsar, the one who was cut into the 14 pieces, because that represented 14 cycles of time in order for him to mature and how to use that power righteously and not abuse that power. Remember, that's the only sin, abuse of power spiritually. And now we got the ultimate son, who Jupiter, who's most prone to abuse that power because it's opening up to the abundance of the last fire sign, the power of our collective, uh, our collective power. And that is why Set, the father, another name for the father, Set is the one who had to cut Asar, the ultimate son, down into those uh, 14 cycles of time. Because Set, remember, is, uh, the father represents the air element, righteous thinking, balanced thinking, Libra, righteous partnerships. So he had to cut, the father had to cut the ultimate son down into 14 cycles of time so he would not abuse that power. When our predecessors abused their powers, they screwed up the world. If we abuse our powers, it's going to be detrimental to the universe. That is why this whole alchemy process, this is what all of this is about. 
teaching us not to abuse that power. As we step up to our full power, we've learned the lessons of not abusing it because if we abuse our power, it's gonna cause problems universally. So this has all been this alchemy process. And it was demonstrated to us through a SAR, Sagittarius, cutting him down to, into the 14 cycles of time uh, in order for him to mature and use it righteously and not abuse that power. And then we go to Pisces, the ultimate water sign, the ultimate mama. Pisces is the sign of the subconscious. That's the entrance into our ancient memory, our Akashic records. Our power comes from the subconscious, not the conscious mind. The subconscious. And that's what we're returning. As we've completed the air and fire external, now we've come back full circle to the earth and the water, the mama and the daughter. So we can access those ancient records because mama is the ancient of ancients. She's the mama of antiquity. She's the mama of ancestors and ancestry. That is why they will track your DNA your, through the mitochondrian DNA. That's to go back to the original ancient mama. So, um, so the, thick, the, the cardinal cross, Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn. The fixed cross, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius. The mutable cross, Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces. All those crosses are operating simultaneously. So get back to the reading here. It says here, it's called the Gemini, the gateway into a new reality of creative rulership. On August the 11th, 1999, there was a fixed cross in the universe demonstrated by most of the planets sitting in the four fixed signs of the zodiac. Leo opposite Aquarius and Taurus opposite Scorpio. August the 11th, 1999, all the planets were sitting in the configuration of a fixed cross. This fixed cross was symbolic of the cross of crucifixion indicating a reversal of energy from the physical to the spiritual rotation. It is time for daughter earth to become a sacred planet, which means she must become holistic. In order to do this, she must now shake off the parasites. Anyone that's not contributing their energy at the rate that they're taking it is considered a parasite. In order to be in a healthy relationship, you have to be in a balanced relationship. You have to be able to give the energy back at the rate you take it. And if you're not getting it back at the rate you're giving it, then that's how you get into a parasitical relationship. And that is where, um, you know, uh, it's like trying to blow up a balloon with a hole in it. You have to be able to give it back at the rate you take it in order to have a healthy in relationship because the key is balance. Nothing's inherently bad is being off balance that causes friction. Because when you're off balance, you're going to have abuse on one half and you're going to have neglect on the opposite half. So it has to be a balanced relationship. Even if it's, you know, if they can only give a little, you just have to match and give a little in return. That will keep it healthy. If they can give a lot, then you can give a lot in return. But if you have uh, one giving more than the other, someone's going to become resentful and someone's going to feel entitled. That's the imbalance. That's what degrades the creative process. Because when you do create, when you do come into a balance with someone in order to create whatever it is you want to create together, if you have a superior and an inferior, um, they're only going to create at the level they connect. That means the higher vibration of the higher, the, the superior will become non and void. And that's how you degrade the creative process. Uh, the quality uh, creative process 
is the equality of the opposites. And the, the more match, the more it's a match for one another, the more equal they are, the more balanced they are, the more uh, the quality of the creative process. So um, on that day, the focus of the sun was in Leo. Leo is the sign of creative rulership, which meant that it was time to reverse rulership from the material to a creative rotation. Each time the sun entered one of those fixed signs, there was a tear down of the material rulership demonstrated by the element of that sign. Leo being the fixed fire unleashed the element of fire to tear down the material kingdom. The next fixed sign the sun entered was Scorpio. Being a water element, there was water energy tearing down the material kingdom. Onto the fixed air sign of Aquarius, uh, where air uh, element tore down, uh, released the energy to tear down uh, the material kingdom. And finally, the fixed sign of, of Taurus. Taurus, earth element, which is the materialism, the money, the health issues, all that deal with the earth, you know. So anything that falls under the earth element, that was the energy through the Taurus that was devastating this material kingdom. After four cycles or rotations, the sun uh, of the sun through these fixed signs, all of the energy had been released to completely tear down the material kingdom. Then on November the 8th, 2003, at four years, from 1999, um, there was another configuration of planets representing the Star of David, symbolizing that it was now to release the energy for the royal family to step up to the new rulership of the new Aquarian age by healing the wounds of Willie Lynch. The Star of David gave a complete breakdown of the royal family mother and father at the first level, because it was sitting on its side of the six-pointed uh, star. So you can see the three levels. You have the first level, the mom, the father and the mother. The father was Saturn in Cancer, the sign of unconditional love. The mama was the moon uh, in the sign of Taurus. And there was a full lunar eclipse that day. Um, and then the second level, you had the brother and the sister. You had uh, Jupiter in Virgo as the sister. And across from her, you had Mars in Pisces as the brother. That's going to come become very significant as we get into uh, the um, part, part five. That's going to be very significant. The Mars in Pisces. Pisces is a sign of escapism. So that means the brother um, went into escapism. He went into fantasy land. Mars is sexual. That's where he abandoned his woman. And that's where he went to drugs and alcohol. And the sister, Jupiter in Virgo, and uh, her wounding, uh, Jupiter would indicate materialism. And Virgo is the sign of, of um, cleansing, purification in order to heal in our wisdom. It's the one that, reason Virgos are so meticulous when details is because they can leave no stone out unturned because they're the ones that hunts out all impurities to cleanse and purge and anytime we're dealing with earth, we're dealing with values. So cleansing of false values in order to heal in our wisdom. But in the polluted state, the sister becomes polluted in her value through materialism. And that is when she becomes the, um, you know, she starts worshiping or honoring uh, the white man um, through the boss on her job or, um, you know, through... Okay, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> but anyway, um, so that was the second level. Uh, on the first level, 
uh, like I said, uh, Saturn being the father in cancer, unconditional love. So in his pollution, he became conditional in his love toward the family. He cut off his love. Anytime we're dealing with air, we're dealing with cutting off or dissecting. So the father cut off his love, became conditional. And the unconditional sign of cancer, we, that indicates how the wounding occurred. So that means he became conditional in his love toward the family and cut it off. Didn't protect the mom. That's why the mama in Taurus, the sign of values, uh, had to begin to compromise her values. That is when she became the slave master's mistress. You know, to gain the value, uh, she had to compromise that value. That's how she got wounded. And then the last level was the son and daughter level. Of course, the son on November the 8th was in Scorpio. So Scorpio was the one who pray, played the role of the son. As a matter of fact, Scorpio played the role of David in this uh, star David. Um, and because Scorpio, um, at his lowest vibration, and you know, every energy has a low, middle, and high vibration. So Scorpio at his lowest vibration is controlling water. So emotional controlling and abusive. He has become emotionally controlling and abusive to the daughter, which is represented as Chiron and Capricorn. Chiron represents uh, our wounds, how we've been wounded, our ancient wounds um, in the universe. But in our astrological chart is how we were wounded in our childhood and how they became subconscious wounds. And we dispense that until we heal that. Um, so in the larger universal scheme, uh, the daughter was in was Chiron and Capricorn. And she's the only one who didn't compromise her character. And that is why she's also been rejected. She didn't put on the blue contact lenses like the mama did, the mother did. And she didn't put on the, um, you know, the, um, um, what the skin lightener like the sister did, you see. Uh, she stayed true to her value as a melanated woman, but that's got her rejected because she's not compromising especially by the son and because he doesn't trust the mama because the mama has a become um, devalued and that's what opposite the sun, Taurus, the moon in Taurus, opposite the sun in Scorpio. So since he doesn't trust the mama who's compromised their values, now he's become controlling and abusive to the daughter. The only one who stayed true to her character as Capricorn energy. So I asked my spirit why the star of David. That's when it took me back to the David and Goliath story. How did David slay Goliath with a stone? The stone would be Taurus. Taurus is the first earth sign. On that day, that's where the moon was at for the mama in Taurus. And on that day, there was a full lunar eclipse. And what that eclipse was symbolizing was the slingshot. And the reason um, David uh, represented the sun, uh, because in the star of David, uh, no one could slay Goliath, um, the giant. All the fathers... I want y'all to understand that on a spiritual level, on a holistic level, the father, uh, the, the son represents the physical man and the father represents the spiritual man on a holistic level. But so in this story, we're talking about uh, the father, uh, the older man or the grown up. And then the son is David because he was the young boy. All the men tried to kill Goliath, but they couldn't do it. And then David stepped up as a little boy or a young boy, said, I can do it. That's why he's represented as the son, the son versus the fathers. 
that couldn't kill Goliath. And the son stepped up and said, uh, or the young man stepped up and said, I can, I can kill him. And they laughed at him. You know, they ridiculed him. And that's when he took the slingshot and, you know, and, um, and put out the giant's lie and that's what killed him. Um, so that's what the star David was representing. The mama, the mama, it started with the, the mother becoming the mama, coming back to her values, passing the stone, the slingshot, passing the stone from Taurus to Scorpio, from the moon to the sun. And when she passes that stone of value to the sun, that activates his transformation, Scorpio, his emotional transformation. And then that is how he then resurrects into righteous father spirit, who then redeems the value of daughter earth or daughter character. And my spirit said to me, at that point, the polar opposite energy of white man is black woman. Opposite of white is black, opposite of woman is man. And the Willie Lynch, that's what the runes of Willie Lynch were meant to do. Keep the black woman down in her energy so the white man can stay on top. So how do you take him down? You simply lift her up. So when you redeem her value and lift her up, that is how David slays Goliath or the giant lie. That's how David slays Goliath. That's what the fixed cross, excuse me, the um, cross of crucifixion was indicating. And now we had the fixed cross on uh, August 11th, and we had the cross of crucifixion on November 8th, 11, 8, 8, 11. So they said, that's how they wounded us. The mother smothered. What they did was killed off the father who was protecting the family in front of the mother. So she would smother the fire or the power of the son keep him a little boy in his ego so he wouldn't grow into the father and be killed also. So the mother, you put an S in front of mother, the water smother. The mother smothers the fire or the power of the sun. And since opposites are the same on the spiritual end of that, the father, the protector, abandons if the mother smothers, the father abandons in opposition. So the father abandons the value, earth, earth is values. So the father abandons the value of the daughter, daughter earth. That is how they wounded us. And they said it will self-perpetuate unless something phenomenal turns it around. And that was those phenomenals, the cross, the fixed cross, and the cross of crucifixion. Now, I'm going to tell you guys this. If you're going to be dealing with this message in your left brain, you might as well leave right now. This is a conceptual story. This is a spirit is symbolic. And I'm tired of wasting time trying to explain the details. We're supposed to surpass the details because I'm seeing, you know, we don't want to talk about the black woman or the black man, the color black. I understand it's melanated. That's why I started off with the melanin. But now we're doing symbolisms and we're, you're supposed to be able to expand it to a conceptual meaning. We're not going to stay literal here. The last time I did a um, presentation, they were over there in the comments arguing about the Gregorian calendar. I dealt with that when I did the Hammond Summit over 20 years ago. I thought we had put that to rest. And here they're still nitpicking those details. 
You're not going to be able to jump to see the bigger behind the individual if you're staying in that left brain. Yes, I know color black. We're not really black. I know all that. I'm trying to give you a scenario and we have to use the, the information um, that we're used to understanding in order to take it to the next level. So please stop nitpicking details. That is just not going to help you see, you know, uh, we can't see the forest for the trees. You know, I'm the opposite. I can't see the trees for the forest. I see everything conceptually. I always see the bigger picture. And then I put the individual aspects in harmony with that. So um, if you're here to nitpick details, you know, trying to tear this information down because it doesn't conform with your literal, literal detail, you know, the Gregorian calendar. Okay, because this was going on when I was doing the two, 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 two. Um, well, that's a Gregorian calendar there she's using. You know, we're dealing with spiritual energy. And it doesn't conform to what, to, you know, what you believe is true when it comes to where we get our information. I always tell people, you could be, wake up in the middle of the night and the first thing you do is look at the clock, get uh, a numerology message. Then you might wake up and then you'll see those numbers again on the clock. That's your spirit trying to pull your coattail, you know, pay attention to this symbolism of these numbers. You might go get in your car, you know, and a license, a car pulls up in front of you with a license plate with those numbers. Are you going to nitpick what type of car it was? Oh, that was a Honda. I'm not going to pay attention to it because it was a Honda, you know, didn't come as a Lincoln Continental, so it ain't valid. That is what we're talking when we keep nitpicking the details. The small details, those are the things that are compressed to make the bigger uh, energy. So stop nitpicking the details. You're not going to be able to see the bigger picture. This is the same thing that happened with this, this video, part five. Everybody got caught up in the theatrics of it, just like the movie, The Matrix. And they were so focused on the small details that they missed the bigger meaning. We got to stop doing that, people. It's time for us to step up. We have to become holistic. That means it includes all that. You know? I shouldn't have to explain that right now. We should be higher than this. So that was the cross of crucifixion. That was the uh, Star David, which was the phenomenon that turned the energy around to heal the wounds. This happened in 2003 because we went into the Aquarius age in 2013. Um, 13 is the optimal number. That's the highest vibration number, 13. That's when you make your transformation. In the um, Tarot deck, uh, the, 13th, uh, the, the 13 of the major arcana card is Scorpio energy, uh, the death card. So we're talking transformation. So that's when we activate the transformation after 13 cycles. We complete 13 cycles. That's how we get elevated to the next level and start the next 13 cycles. So on um, December 21st, 2013 is when we entered the Aquarius age. We have been cleansed and healed in the energy um, by the cross of crucifixion on um, on um, November the, excuse me, on August the 11th, 1999. And then we got the Star David, Star of uh, David on November the 8th, 2003. I don't know if this will show up, but I did find um, that Star David chart. I don't know if I can get this to show. Let me see. Doesn't 
Well, wait, maybe, maybe, maybe we can get it to show. This was a chart for that date. And um, you can see as I connected those planets, it formed that star David, but the star David was sitting on its side. Um, so you saw the three levels. You see the bottom level, the middle level, and the top level. That's where the, all those planets made that configuration. That's the chart for uh, November 8th, you see. Um, those phenomenals that turn that energy around. Um, I'm trying to give you the big, big backdrop, the big story, because what we got with Kendrick's um, Heart 5 was the culmination was the fulfillment of that energy that I've just talked about. You know, this bigger purpose that's being served. That is what this um, represented. The first thing we're going to look at when we look at that. Um, oh, one more thing before I get there. This is spirit told me I needed to read this. This is called, it's, um, it says, it is said that the mystery of the Sakina, Sakina comprises all women and that this is why she does not abide except with him who is united to a woman. Um, let me see, is this the part I wanna read? No, let me jump down. It says the union father and mother produces twins, Horus or Haru, the son going forward to the daughter and the daughter returning the energy to the father. Through this cycle of change, the stability of eternity of the universe are assured. The twins of Tetragrammaton, the twins of Tetragrammaton, the son and daughter, Horus and Ma'at, thus constituting a double current or twin aeons, the Va and the He final. She is now the daughter of the king. She is now the betrothed, the bride and the mother. And again, she is sister in relations to the world of man at large. There is a sense also in which the daughter of God is also the mother of man. The father, the mother, and the Holy Son all prepared to raise the fallen daughter. The mother, the father, and the son once more symbolically united with the final daughter, raising the falling daughter, the animal soul or matter to the throne of the mother, where the earthly component, the daughter is redeemed by her marriage with the son is thereby set up on the throne of the mother. Now, the reason spirit wanted me to read that because this is exactly what that heart part five was symbolizing. Do you know that it was not a coincidence that Kendra dropped this on mother's day, Mother's Day. And on the 8th, remember we had 8-11 and we had 11-8. So that means the 8 is very significant in this infinite. That's the number of for infinity. So on May 8th, and May is the month for mama. That's mama's month, May. So on May 8th, and which happened to be uh, the anniversary of the transition of my son. He passed on May 8th, 2013. And what was so interesting about that is I had given the symbolism of the Super Bowl in February. And this was the Super Bowl where we had a mother-son Super Bowl because we had the San Francisco 49ers, cancer energy, 49 as the 13, that's mama's magic. 
And we had the Baltimore Ravens, Leo energy, the sun. So this was the, the Super Bowl where the lights went out for 34 minutes. Beyonce was doing the halftime. And after the halftime, uh, the lights went out for 34 minutes. But it came back on on the sun side. So we had the sun half, Baltimore, lit up. And we had the mama's half, the dark, the hidden, which is what it's supposed to be. Mama universe who's exposed to the light of the sun. And in this Super Bowl, um, like I said, 34 minutes. And then the Baltimore Ravens ends up winning the Super Bowl. But it was symbolic of the mama, the mother now becoming the mama, no longer smothering the fire or the power of the sun. <clears throat> she backs up the negative polarity. That's the feminine polarity. Our power comes in backing up. We have the magnetic pull to pull the masculine forward. So the mother, the mother, no longer the mother now becomes the mama who's the negative polarity backs off of smothering the fire or the power of the sun in order for him to be able to resurrect into righteous father spirit who then redeems the value of daughter earth or daughter character. That's what that Super Bowl was symbolizing. Um, releasing the son into his resurrection. So it was very interesting in May when I, as a mother, mama, had to release my son into his resurrection. And I had already given the synopsis of the Super Bowl in February, and this happened in May of 2013. And What's really interesting about this is my son was 43 years old. So the lights went out for 34 minutes and my son was 43. 43, 34. You see. So the resurrection of the son into his power so he can step up and open up the uh, energy vibrations to um, benefit his physical family. That is what they told me about my son. They wouldn't let him ascend till after his birthday, September 20th. For him to turn 44 before they allowed him to ascend. So the way they put it, so he could be equally attentive to his cosmic mom as to his physical mom. That's what the 44 represented, because four is the number of completion. So that is what that Super Bowl indicated, the resurrection of the son, the mother becoming the mama and releasing her son into resurrection. This is where we start with Kendrick's video, because he did it on Mother's Day. And that was symbolic of... Mama Universe now releasing the son into his resurrection. And so the first thing we see in Kendrick's video is the words, I am, period, all of us. That was not something we should have missed. We were so anxious to get to the video. A lot of people didn't pay attention. But that is what is going to help you be able to understand the meaning of the video. You see, I am, period, all of us, the one and all and the all in one. You don't blend energy, you harmonize energy. The one and all and all in one. You not you guys know how many times I've done the demonstration of the hand. You have a thumb, you have a index finger, a middle finger, a ring finger, little finger, 
the back of the hand, the nails, the palm, all these components come together to make a hand, a whole. But they each have an individual role to contribute to the whole. If we blended it all into thumbs, we wouldn't get a lot done. It's not about blending, it's about harmonizing energy. And so um, Aries, don't bleed into Taurus. Taurus don't bleed into Gemini. Gemini don't bleed into Cancer. Cancer don't bleed into Leo. Leo don't bleed into Virgo, and on and on. Each one brings their own unique mastery to the table and contribution to the whole. The one and all and the all in one, and that's who we are actually as well. Individual aspects of the whole. And only our spirit can give us the guidance and how to serve that unique purpose. Your purpose is gonna be uniquely different from anyone else's purpose. It's not about blending, it's about harmonizing. We're all a part of this creative process of an evolutionary new rulership for the Aquarian age. I say it's like the twinkling of a star. And you're only responsible for one twinkle, not the full twinkling, but the one twinkle is just as important as the full twinkling. Because if you're not in position to make your contribution, when it's your time to shine, the star's not complete. If it's not complete, if it's not whole, it's not real. So the one and all in the all in one, this is what Kendrick is saying, I am than all of us because we come together each individually to make this whole and in his perspective that's what he starts off talking about perspectives of the whole perspectives of the whole your perspective may be different from mine And then he thanks his fans, his beautiful fans, and all that has taught him. But if you notice, the very last comment that he made before he went into his bars. <laughs> you look, at, look at me, I learned a new term, bars, <laughs> by looking at those reaction videos. But before he went into his bars, the last thing he said is this is for my people. This is for my people. And then he starts off with a red background and white shirt and black bandana and he's hugging himself. That was a hug. People were like, Oh, he looked like he on crack. He looked like he on drugs because he was rocking and he was hugging himself. What Kendrick was emulating was the pulsation of the heart. He was um, positioning himself as a heart. He was on the left side of the screen with the red background and he was hugging himself. There's that hug is going to become very significant in this video. The hug. I heard some people misinterpret it as the hood. If you look up the lyrics, they're going to say the hood. Now, what does that, I mean, how does that make sense? You know, I want the hood. When he's talking about coming out of the hood, healing the wounds of the hood. No, it wasn't the hood, it was the hug. And I know that for a fact because when I continue to expose to you, you're gonna, you're gonna see directly that that's exactly what he was talking about, a hug, not the hood. And um, so 
that's when he goes into uh, his bars and immediately he's telling you, he's bringing you right into the emotions of living in a culture where there's been such a wounding that has been generationally passed down. A generational wounding. That's a spiritual wounding. Anytime you're dealing with a collective, you're dealing with spirit. So wounding, a generational family wounding, generationally passed down. We don't even think consciously about what we're doing. We're just doing it because it's been passed down to us to do it. We're not even thinking about why and what we're doing. It's the culture. Oh, well. So he goes into this bars and he gives you a horrendous, you know, how, you know, I, I you know, I come from a, a, a generation of pain where murder is minor. And, and y'all know Kendrick, he's using, you know, there's double meanings all over the place. Well, murder is minor. So you could be a minor, you know, witnessing murder all the time, or, you know, it's just not that significant. So then he goes on, you know, realignment, you know, uh, going off, you're going, taking the wrong turn and realignment and, and you know, uh, how you can get jacked up for your, you know, uh, for your bling. And 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 then and then how you can uh, you know be vulnerable if you don't go out with your protection and then you take the charge for the boys and as you hit the yard they already got your woman that's culture that's the way it is you know and then he goes on you know he talks about how we've become deadened and then we've become, you know, uh, deadened to this uh, reality. Um, you can't take the pain, pop a bottle. Next day, you forget all about the remains. You continue to move forward for the next cycle of that same reality. You can't even, you know, uh, you can't even, what he said, uh, we no longer do the car washes anymore. You know, we do the, um, what is it? The, um, or the where you get the money. Um, come on, somebody help me. You know, my details. Um, you, where, um, you, 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 where you get the money through, um, what is it? I forget it is where, where they, they, they donate the money online. And then he says, um, yeah, GoFundMe. Thank you, you, you Universe 47. Uh, GoFundMe. Um, and he says, and you think you'll get the funeral paid for, you know, with the GoFundMe. And then the next victim <laughs> happens. And now somebody's, you know, they're funding a new GoFundMe. So yours just get forgotten about. And so then, now we start getting into the perspectives or the personalities. And do, we need to understand why he used, what personalities he used there. There's a system to it. He didn't just do it happenstance. And it just tickled me the way people, you know, how they responded. Um, because first, what he came into uh, OJ Simpson. That was the first jolt. That was the first time they saw him change up. OJ, why would he use OJ? You know? So the first thing we want to do is nitpick, you know, the reason behind why would he use OJ Simpson? Then here comes Kanye. 
West, and then here comes Jussie, Jussie Smollett. What is Kendrick doing? Why are he why is he using these personalities? Okay. It took me a while. I had to watch it over and over. I had to get feedback. I had to see perspectives. I had to do all of that, you know, before I could put all these pieces together. And um, I told you guys before the degenerate cycle. I told you what the degenerate cycle is. The degenerate cycle is first interracial relationships that starts it i'm not being uh derogatory it's just i'm an energy person all i do is study energy and report you that so i'm giving you a perspective from an energy perspective so why would i say interracial would start the degenerate cycle because as I said to you earlier, if you don't come together and balance your match, your equal, you have to be able to give it back at the rate you take it. When there's an imbalance, it becomes a parasitical relationship. Someone is feeding off the energy that they can't return. So as much as you want to give it, you have to be able to receive that back in order to have a healthy relationship. So that is why it starts with the interracial. And from interracial, it goes to homosexual. And from homosexual, it goes to pedophilia. And from pedophilia, it goes to bestiality. And from bestiality, it goes to necrophilia. That is the degenerate cycle. So, in OJ's generation, he represented the highest profile. And don't forget the LA connection or the Compton. He's using Compton as a uh, figurehead. And that's what he's doing with all of this, figureheads. Because all the people he used, there could be a hundred or a thousand other people he could have used in that same position. This is what you need to understand. Those who have been hurt in the way that uh, caused the perspective for the ones that you know, and he's he's using high profile black men. This is a black man's message. And um, so he uses OJ because OJ was the first main profile in LA to abandon his woman. He abandoned his woman in that generation. And then this generation, the next to come forth and abandon his woman was Kanye. So then that was where it started the breakdown of the brother and the sister coming together equally as yin and yang because we have to come together as yin and yang. That means we have to come together equally, the brother-sister level, in order to heal those wounds. And um, remember when I talked about the brother on the star, David? Mars in Pisces? Escapism? Mars sexual? So escaping through white women? Escaping through drugs and alcohol. Didn't defend his sister. So 
that's the symbolism of that. The brother went into fantasy land and escapism. Pisces is the sign of escapism. Mars and Pisces. That's what represented his wounding. So those first two, the, the generation and this generation where you know, that um, lecture I did in, in, in Harlem, New York on uh, May 22nd in 2005, I made a comment. I said, you can either step up to your royalty or step down to your peasantry. And that depends on who you choose as your woman. I'm, I'm being frank here. And I get my energy, my information from energy information from the energies. So next we go to Jesse Smollett. Said, uh, the streets got me messed up. You know, he didn't say messed up. Um, Y'all can miss me. Then he goes on to say, um, was over in Argentina, water between us, another one falls, the tears and the water between us. He's not talking as Jesse at that point. He's not talking as Jesse. Uh, Kendrick is going to morph into these different characters, but he's also going to morph in and out of these different characters to show the connection the flow of how all these perspectives are connected through the cultural wounding that has been generationally passed down. When Jesse says, I did this, um, I did this for you, I did this for us, a new revolution. He's talking to gay black man. He did it for us. Gay black men is who he's talking about a new revolution. He wasn't talking with the, the, uh, the Argentina part, that was referring to Kendrick because he was the one in Argentina when um, Nipsey got killed. He was the one in Argentina when Nipsey got killed, Kendrick was. So that was him speaking through Jesse, but it was about his experience. And then Jesse goes on to say um, about <clears throat> getting someone of getting someone of the same skin to do it, which is what he did. You know, when he faked that that, and then he went to these. Um, I don't know if they were African. I know they were um, international. And um, they're the ones turned on him. So this is why he said, y'all can miss me. You know, I did this for us. And then you turned on me and turned me in. You know? And then uh, we get Kendrick. And he goes into the next hug. He started with the hug in the beginning and now he goes to the hug again. And he goes, that's when we go, I want you. I want a hug. Look what I've done for you. Look what I've done for you. What did he mean by that? Now in the midst of breaking down the culture and all the repercussions of our wounding, this is what he's been describing. And, you know, the um, degenerate cycle, abandoning our women for the white woman, abandon our women for a homosexual relationship. So who is he talking to when he says, I want you, but I want you to want me too. I want a hug. 
Look what I've done for you. Okay. Well, only way you're going to understand that, the only way you're going to understand that is to understand what song is that? Whose song is that? Who put out the song, I Want You? Marvin Gaye. Now, if you want to really understand what this is meaning, where he hugs himself and he says, I want a hug, I want you, look what I've done for you, then I suggest you go and listen to Marvin Gaye's song, I Want You. And if you go listen to Marvin Gaye's song, I Want You, you might get another perspective of what, why. Let's ask, why did Kendrick use Marvin Gaye's I Want You? to make his point. Why did he use that? And in order to understand why, you need to go listen to the song. I want you, but I want you to want me too. Just as much as I want you. And all I'm getting is a half of love it's so sad. You don't want me now, but I'm going to find a way to change your mind some way, somehow. Who is he talking to? <laughs> Who is he talking to? I want you. I want you to go to another video of Marvin Gaye's. Like I told you, I had to pull old material out because we're going from the beginning to the end. I want you to go way back to Marvin's song. It's, he did this like in the 60s. And it's called Chained. Chained. And you have to go to the um, Playboy After Dark version of the song Chained. And in this video, he's at the Playboy Mansion. And Hugh Hefner asks him, to sing the song. He's sitting on the hearth of the fireplace. And when Hugh Efner asked him to sing the song Chained, there's a room full of people, mostly white. I see a couple of black guys or melanated men in the background. A lot of white men, a lot of white women. Only one black woman there, just one melanated woman in the room out of all those people. And as Hugh Hefner asked him to sing the song, you see Marvin's eyes go to the left immediately. You didn't see until the camera panned out what he was looking at, and it was that black woman. And he stands up. Yes, that's right. I love you, life, 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 what, live life. Because I meant to mention that because he did say that in the song, I want you. I want you the right way is what he said. And I want you. I want you the right way. That is what he says. I want you the right way. So in this Playboy Mansion, he stands up, he looks at her again, and this time he bows down to her. And then he starts singing the song, Chained. I'm chained to your love. 
something went wrong. I want to fix it. And I want to carry you tenderly back home. You're all I need. And he serenaded her the whole time. They could have been the only two people in the room. He even takes her hand at one point. She's over the moon, of course. You see her cheekbones go up like my cheekbones go up. They don't show her full face either because that is symbolic. He wasn't trying to sing to one particular black woman. This is when he released the energy to redeem the value of the black woman. That was when that energy was released. Energy unfold. What we saw in the Kendrick video was the fulfillment of the energy he released through that song from Chained to I Want You. And at the end of the song, he gives her a double nod. He nods at her, he nods at her again boy, before he looks over to, you know, um, Hugh Hefner and his women and, and the rest of the people. He gives them their acknowledgement, but not until he completed his focus on her. And at the end, you saw all these women looking at this black woman like, you know, wow, aren't you special? Boy, aren't we envious. This is in the 60s. Go look at it. You don't got to take my word for it. Go ahead and do your own research. But if you're going to really get to the gist of the message, you're going to have to see beyond what was presented. Take those kernels that were presented and take it to where the source, where did it come from? So then what happens? We move to Will Smith. I brought up the Gemini. I brought up Kendrick as a Gemini. And I told you that he was a master channeler. And I happen to believe there was a lot more channeling going on than you know, what most people realize, you see. All they wanted to talk about was the deep fake. But you didn't notice he took on the characteristics of these people, that the movements and, and all of that. The master channeler, Gemini. And I happen to think whenever he was talking about, I want you, I happen to believe he was channeling a Marvin Gaye. Because Marvin is all throughout the song. He starts it off with the music. In the middle, we got him, you know, I want you. I want a hug. And then he ends it with Marvin Gaye. So he was the hidden head. He was the code. And if you didn't see the code, you didn't see the message. And the reason that the one, the Will Smith, got me so much is because you always channel best through your opposite energy. Remember two halves make a whole? Will Smith is Libra. Marvin Gaye was Aries opposite signs Aries from from Aries to Libra and when he channeled when he when we went into Will Smith and Will Smith says hurt people hurt other people fuck calling it the culture okay so now we had the abandonment, white women, white women, homosexuality. Now we get to the couple that are together, black men, 
black woman, Will Smith, and it's still not working. But why is it not working? Because we've come from a culture of hurt and pain that has been generationally passed down and we're all hurt and we're all hurting each other. Even when we come together as a couple, we're just taking it out on each other. And one of the other things that Kendrick was trying to expose in this video is that we have to stop sitting in judgment of one another. We have to recognize why we're who we are. What are the repercussions of coming up in a culture of wounded, um, being wounded ancestrally, generationally passed down? And so we're, we're not getting to the root of the problem we're only pointing fingers at each individual. You know, well, you know, uh, oh, Jay, I ain't black. Mr. I ain't black, why should we listen to him? Jesse Spillett, okay? An embarrassed, you, you faked a hate crime and got caught. I mean, they, they found your check where you paid the guys. They got a video of you in the store buying the rope that you kept around your neck. When you went back to your apartment and the police came, you still had the rope on your neck. Come on. And as um, Dave Chappelle said, we were protecting Jussie by remaining silent. Because we knew he was clearly lying. You see, that was unrealistic. You know, when we get lynched, when we really get lynched, we're not going to leave there alive. You're not going to call us some names, put a rope around our neck, throw some bleach on us and let us walk away. You run into the night. That hasn't been our experience. And our lynching. So we knew that wasn't real. But we're not to sit in judgment because we are wounded. We're not operating as our true self. And the only way we're going to operate as our true self is we're going to operate holistically. And we're only now getting to the juncture where we can get there. We can get there. So hurt people hurt other people, which means he was hurt by Jada, but Jada was hurt herself as well. These are how these wounds are passed down, passed over to each other. And rather than sitting in judgment and nitpicking, you know, uh, against that person, get to the root of why the person is the way they are, or what made them make those choices or come to that path or, you know, um, you're not going to grow up through a culture of hurt and pain, and then step up and be Mr. Magnificent. No issues, no problems. I'm just all great. I'm just so wonderful. Nobody has anything wrong to say about me. That's not going to happen. One guy on one of the um, reaction videos, he said something very profound. He said, you can either die young as a hero or stay around and become the villain. And that is exactly our path, our black men, our melanated men. Either die young as a hero or stay around and become the villain. 
So hurt people hurt other people. We finally got the man and the woman together. And we're still having problems. What is there to do? And then Kendrick, that's where he completes the physical half. He completes the physical half of this presentation. And then he segues when he plays the music. I want you. Music playing. And he says, drop the drums. Now, I don't know how many of you are into Marvin Gaye, but that was his patent move. Marvin would always do that. He would always instruct the band, you know, he put his hands out for them to drop it down, drop it down. We're going to do this. As a matter of fact, I think they took that. Uh, there's a pra there's a practice video of Marvin doing I Want You where he's in the, he's practicing and he's got his band there and he's really, really, um, you know, giving them instructions. We're going to do this four times. We're going to do this four times. Yes, gonna. I like that. Four times, we're going to do it this way. You know, go high, go high, go all the way up. You know. And then there's another one where he's doing um, what's going on. He's outside and he's showing the community uh, as he's uh, doing the song. I love looking at those videos because they're very nostalgic because, you know, we showed one scene in Chicago and you know, all you see is this bunch of black folks, you know, in Chicago, walking around at the park, having fun as Marvin's music is playing in the background, you know, and, um, you know, and it's just a nostalgic time because that's when we were truly a community. These were the times when we were truly together. We really valid, valued one another. This was the generation when, you know, because you saw all these black people, the park, children out playing football, uh, you know, they're in the park dancing together. You know, the father and son is walking down the street. Is that that part? Marvin says, you know, drop the music down, drop it down, you know, so he can segue into another song. But that was his patent move. Kendrick coded. Marvin throughout the song. If you didn't catch the code, you didn't catch the meaning. So drop the drums. That was a Patton Marvin move. And then what was he doing at that point? He was emulating the pulsation of the heart. That is why he was hugging and rocking around the way he was doing, the pulsating heart, being healed. And that is how he segued from the physical half down to the spiritual half of the message. And when he segued to the spiritual half of the message, he goes on to tell you, now, you know, now what is it we need to do? You know, you know, you're going to, you know, give up personal gains, you know, just to make sure that the next generation, you know, is better. That's how he starts off with the second half. It's time for us to give up all in order to protect our next generation, protect our children. It's time for us to come out of this personal perspective of all about me and, and you know, and what's going on with me and start worrying about us as a family. Let's heal as a family. And the first way we're gonna do that is to start taking care of our children, the next generation. We gotta make sure that they don't, we don't continue the cycle. That they can now, we can break that cycle.
And then, you know, as he as he morphs into Kobe. And Kobe, now we're dealing with the spiritual man. We are spiritual beings. We're here having a physical experience, not the other way around. We have more in common with these spiritual people. We have a connection to our spiritual ancestors, our spiritual loved ones. So now we get Kobe. He made it. Again, we're dealing L.A. All these figures have to do with L.A. But he's only using L.A. and, and Compton as a um, figurehead for all of the inner cities. All of the high profile people, like I said, he could have used, if he went to a different city, he would have used a different uh, OJ. If he went to a different you know, place, he would have used different figures that pertain to that state or that city, you know? But it represents all. What he said in the beginning, I am all of us. We're seeing both sides of the coin here. We're, we're focusing on a personal, that's what the sun does. It focuses. So we're focusing on LA. We're focusing on Compton. We're focusing on those perspective of those individuals that are connected to LA. It could have been Gary, Indiana. Then we just shown Mike. We saw Michael Jackson show up. See, Chicago, Earth, Wind, and Fire. We know Earth, Wind, and Fire was in LA, but you know their home is Chicago. So you can apply the city to the personality, to our greats, to our creative men. They're the masters in creativity. But that's how they've been wounded egotistically. Because the same week I saw the movie, I saw the video Chained with Marvin Gaye, in the same week, Spirit brought me the movie Flight. In my book, I talk about how we have been wounded as a couple. In the dedication page, I talk about how we have been wounded as a couple, uh, the black man in his ego, and the black woman being put at the bottom of the totem pole in her value, she's been wounded in her insecurities. So, he, um, so it's how we have to heal those wounds. That movie Flight with Denzel Washington, he was a pilot, but he was a drunk. But he was so good at what he did that he could land a plane that was messed up with the fewest casualties than anybody else because they would do the simulations and the simulations and nobody was able to land the plane without as few as casualties as uh, Denzel Washington did in this role he played as this pilot. But he was so egotistic because of his brilliance, because he was so great and so good. And that's what our men are. They're the most creative uh, beings of the universe. No one is more creative than them. But they've let it go to their head. That's why I said when I went to New York, you can step up to your um, royalty or step down to your peasantry. Because he then got into his head. I'm the prince. I'm so great. Uh, I can have any kingdom. I can have any woman in the kingdom I want. Any color woman. Why should I choose the black one? That's what's become his attitude. Why should I stay true to her? 
After all, we can point the finger at her. She's done, she's so materialistic. She's so mean. So let's nitpick and point fingers and come up with some uh, rationalization. This is the why you can't stay with your woman. Bobby Hammond said there were, he did a study, 80% of them stay with their own. So that is that movie Flight. He was so into himself. Everybody in the world tried to help him. He couldn't listen to anybody. Not even his own wife and son. He just, and this is what happens when we get up there and we get, I used to say if we had, if all of us had the money Michael Jackson had, you'd have seen a lot more Michael Jacksons running around. And you know what I mean by that. If we had the money the Michael Jackson had, a lot more of us would have done those things to change our appearance. So it's when you get the money, when you get up there, when you get the notoriety, the celebrity status that you feel free, you know, to do what you think, you know, um, is going to put you, you know, at the top in this reality. So egotistic, nobody can tell him anything. At the end, he finally caved, did his time, and was humbled. That is what has to happen. Our men have to stop, you know, have to come out of their ego. And the women, we are the high priestess from a universal perspective. We have to be the ones to set standards, to challenge our men to rise to meet those standards. That is his resurrection. Women are the resurrectors, the men are the redeemers. This is what they showed you in the movie, The Matrix. Trinity resurrecting Neil from the dead, which is the illusion of power through his ego. She resurrected him. Oracle told me I was gonna fall in love with the one, I'm in love with you, that makes you the one, get your butt up. And he gets up. Because she knew. He didn't know. He doubted. Doubts, fears, and guilts is what undermines our power. And they've kept us in doubts, fears, and guilt. Those distractions I was talking about earlier, that's how they keep us in the doubts, fears, and guilts. Look down. Ooh, we're going to have a dark winter. Ooh, we're going to have a food shortage. Ooh, we're going to have war. Ooh, somebody's killing up people here in this grocery store. That's only to keep you looking to doubts, fears, and guilts. Fears is the big one. But if you're secure, the earth, the first prerequisite to qualifying as a royal member, you have to be secure from within. You have to know your power in order to activate your power. If you think they can get you, yes. They will be able to get you. If you know they can't touch you, they can't touch you. They have to bring us down to get us. They can't come up where we're at and our energy. We're connected to the universe through our energy. With the melanin. We can vibrate all the way out to the highest royal levels. Use that power to overcome anything that they would throw at us, but we too busy, you know, looking down. Ooh, did you, 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 you see uh, Will Smith slap that man? You know, there's a lot of things that are staged just to get your focus. Remember, you energize through your focus. They can't do it. They have to get us to focus in order to energize it into reality. So 
the wounding of the man, thinking he's higher than his woman because he's so good and creative in his power, not recognizing he got that power from Black Mama Universe. Guess who dispensed that power to the sun? We were made in the image of the universe, mama universe, black mama universe, whose magic is hidden and exposed to the sun, S-U-N, the individual black man. So your power came from mama, that's your source. But now mama, her reflection, daughter earth and mama universe. But her reflection is not good enough for you. And I know this is not every case. There are upset exceptions. I have nothing against true love. But recognize that you can only have a healthy relationship in a relationship with someone you're imbalanced with, you're equal to. And my spirit did tell me that every black folks ain't royal. They are comfortable with the peasants as peasants. There's more black peasants than there are black royalty. So that ego wounding and the insecurity of the woman when Trinity resurrects Neil from the dead or the illusion of power. In the next second movie, The Matrix, she brings him back to life. Uh, I mean, excuse me, he brings her back to life by going internal. First, he removes the impurity, the bullet. Then he goes back in and massages her heart. And the first thing she says when she opens her eyes is now we're even, which means now we're equal. Now we can come together as one. They're telepathically connected. She's the internal or in the background, giving him guidance through her wisdom as he moves out and exposes the power guided by her wisdom as the sun. And anytime you have the earth and, and fire, that's the daughter and son. And the first earth and fire is Aries and Taurus. That's the first level of the son and the daughter. The second level is Leo and Virgo, the Sphinx, the body of the lion, the head of the woman, power guided by wisdom, where we have to supersede the ego, Leo, and open up the heart, also Leo, to the value of the one of wisdom, Virgo, power guided by wisdom. Power without wisdom is futile. And this is the rulership that is to be fulfilled, you always fulfill through the opposite. So when we left out of the Piscean age, the opposite of Virgo, and to the Aquarian age, the opposite of Leo. That's the fulfillment of this rulership where we supersede the ego and open the heart to the value of wisdom, what they demonstrated between Trinity and Neo in the movie, The Matrix. Then the last combination, Sagittarius and Capricorn, the highest peak of that cycle between the son and the daughter. And I already told you about a SAR, Sagittarius cut into the 14 pieces, now being healed, now bringing all those pieces back together so he can step up in the full abundance of his power, having proved he will not abuse that power. He now becomes equal to Capricorn or the high priestess at the winter solstice. Now we're equal, now we're even. That's the fulfillment. That's the culmination. The peak of that cycle between the son and the daughter. And guess what? The opposite of Sagittarius is Gemini, the father, the heir, and the opposite of Capricorn is Cancer, the mama. So as the son and daughter comes together in the fulfillment of their destiny, 
our evolution as a new rulership, then at the bottom, because opposites do the same thing, so does the father and the mama. So from the bottom to the top, we have that balance between the father and the mama and the son and the daughter. And in the middle, we got the equinox. We got Mars and Venus, the true yin and yang, Aries and, and Libra, the yin and the yang. The, the mama comes down in her omniscient as mama universe. The father comes up as father spirit, and they become equal at the equinox, where they become Mars and Venus, or uh, the yin and the yang where the two halves have now become equal and now we come together as one. And that's what we do with Kendrick. We go into the spiritual half with Kobe. No matter how high he got, no matter how much he did, how much, how high he got in his uh, reality on this life, it still didn't stop him from having to struggle with the energy of the culture. However, the, um, of course, the, the one with um, Nipsey is the one that really, really put the icing on the cake because he didn't pull no punches with Nipsey. He came right through as Nipsey. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. Tell my people I'm in heaven. And then he tried to give us, you know, the let's stop judging one another because we all been hurt and we all have acted out of that pain and hurt. And he goes on to say to the, to the one who sped up my demise, I forgive you. And I don't know how many people that I watched in the reaction video. What? You forgive, you know. No, I ain't for that. He's trying to show you. He said, because I saw the pain in your eyes, in your pupil, when you pulled that trigger. So the pain in his killer's eyes. We're hurting each other from our own hurts and pains. That's what he was trying to tell us. He said, you, I, 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 but the biggest phrase of all, this ties this all together, that came from Nipsey, is when he said, I don't have to be in the flesh to hug you. We get back to that hug. We get back to that hug. So on the, Physical side, we saw the physical hug. On the spiritual side, now we're seeing the hug. But guess what? It's a hug from Mama Universe, Big Mama, hugging her children. It's now time for us to receive our spiritual hug from the universe. Spirit moves out from mama universe and does her bidding father and son this was a father son operation from the mama straight from mama universe why he did it on mother's day the son was kendrick the physical man and the father was marvin the spiritual man so mama father and son what did I read you about the father, the mama, and the son comes together to raise the fallen daughter, the tetragrammaton? That is what that video was symbolizing. On Mother's Day, the mama, the father, father spirit, that role played by Marvin Gaye, but it could have been played by 
any of our great ones. I heard the name, um, um, you know, of course we got Michael Jackson, we got Prince, we got, you know, Muhammad Ali, we got, you know, there's, there's any number. I can't even think of them because there's so many of them. Marvin Gaye was just playing that role in the movie. There's many of them that could have played that role as well. But Marvin picked the profile better than anyone because, you know, he, um, you can identify him with the full physical to the spiritual aspect. He died young as well. He was a musical genius. He was in LA as well. So he's the thread that you have to weave from the beginning in the middle to the end. A hug. When he says, I want you, I want a hug. Look what I've done for you. His transformation. Prince represented that transformation. Prince re represented that. They did the Super Bowl. He did the same symbolism in the Super Bowl. When he, um, on the stage, shaped like a penis with his guitar, they dropped down a, a silhouette. They dropped down a screen and you see his silhouette as he uses a guitar to uh, symbolize the resurrection. He's a Gemini, re resurrecting into a SAR, the opposite sign Sagittarius. So he's another one that you could put in that movie if we wanted to focus on Minneapolis. You understand what I'm going with this? So if we were we were focusing on Minneapolis, then Prince would have been in the movie. He would have been in the script because he fit the profile like so many of our wonderful, magnificent men. And when he says, I don't have to be in the flesh to hold you, to hug you. He's sending that message from mama. It's time for our spiritual hug. It's time for us to come into balance, the physical with the spiritual. That's the only way you can become whole or holistic is the balance of opposites. And that's the ultimate balance. The ultimate balance of opposites, the dual balance, is the physical with the spiritual, the masculine with the feminine. They don't even want to say the word woman anymore. We don't even know what the word woman mean. We got a black woman, Supreme Court justice, that refused to define the meaning of woman. Oh, I don't know. I'm not a biologist. Are you kidding me? You got that position because you were a black woman. Do you know what the root word of woman is? Womb of man. Representing Big Mama, the womb of men. That is what the word woman means. Now they're telling you a man can have a baby. Because uh, uh, I'm a woman who transgendered into a man and I can still have a baby, so a man can have a baby. This is their rationalization. Are we going to stick with that? Are we going to stick with that? Are we going to accept that as our reality? We can't even define a woman? So I don't have to be in the flesh to hug you. It's time for us to connect to our spiritual loved ones. Like I said, we can now channel from them. It's time for us to step up to our powers. 
but you got to know it. If you don't know it, you don't have it. It's time for us to work the magic. Do you know what mama means? It means I will take care of your needs beyond your capability. That's what mama means. That's what the energy of mama means. When we first came into this physical reality, we had a physical mama who took care of their, our physical needs beyond our capability. We had to lay up in the crib and figure out how to eat or change our diapers. We had a mama who knew what we needed even before we knew what we had a need for to us as babies that had to seem magical. Now we're stepping up as babies into the cosmos. It's time for our evolution. So we're stepping up in the cosmos. Now we have to embrace our cosmic mama in that same vein. And I told you the corruption of the systems, all the systems of the world has reached global level. This is a global agenda. And they're all in it together. Don't have them get you participating in the good cop, bad cop scenario because that's what they've been playing on us forever and a day. Just to get, what did they say in the movie, The Matrix, when Neil went to the architect? What is the problem? The problem is choice, or you think you have a choice. There is no choice. You're either going to step up to your royalty or step down to your peasantry. That is, that's the choice. You think you have a choice. Oh, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a divide and conquer. We're holistic people. We're the spiritual beings of the universe. Melanin is the substance of energy. Mama imparts the melanin. It's water. It comes from the water element. It is energy so dense at its densest form until it crosses over into manifestation and materialization from mama universe to daughter earth. All souls come in through mama universe and are manifested and materialized through daughter earth. And, and the bonding factor, the energy bonding factor is the melanin. But we're going to go into this reality that's opposite of who we truly are as the universal beings. And it's now time for us to step up. All we do is complete spirals for access to the next level where we start a new one at a higher vibration only for access to the next and the next. This is an infinite process of transformation, regeneration, and evolution of spiritual rulership. Whenever the rulership gets stagnated and corrupted, then that is when the transformation and regeneration has to occur. That's all this has been about. It's not about us just being stupid or lazy or uh, unintelligent or just bad people, don't care. It's a cycle of energy. Spiral, spirit is spiral. From the matriarchal half to the patriarchal half, full circle, complete that cycle, elevate to a new level, start a new cycle all over again, but at a higher level. That is what this is all is. Symbolism. In order for you to see the bigger picture, you have to see symbolism. You can't look at one aspect and get the whole picture. Anytime you're looking at a part of the whole, that's the illusion. You have to connect the dots with spirit. It doesn't prove what it's doing until it's ready to fulfill what it's doing, complete what it's doing. It's never going to give you a part of the whole until it's ready to complete and fulfill. You have to stay true in the faith. You have to embrace Big Mama in faith and trust. It goes beyond you figuring it out. Mama magic. First two letters of magic is Ma. She wants to open up the magic of the universe, but we so caught up in our heads are knowing, figuring it out, 
We couldn't see the magic. If the magic happened, we think we figured it out ourselves. Look what I figured out. It's not until you realize you can take it no further that Big Mama comes to the table. She's waiting and anxious to prove the magic to us, that she's our mama. I told y'all the story when I moved to North Carolina and they brought me a little nine-week-old baby girl to watch, little Virgo. And I'd been a long time since I had watched a baby that young. So I went and got her bottle ready. She had been taking her nap. She's about to wake up. I didn't want her to have to cry for anything. So I'm standing there with her bottle, ready for her to wake up so I can give her her bottle before she cries for it. And then I hear Big Mama talking to me. And she says, you see how attentive you are to her? Don't you know I'm just as attentive to you? I fell out crying that was so liberating to hear. Mama magic, mama universe, got her eyes on me. She's attentive to me. She's anybody that wants to embrace mama. She's the one most neglected. We as black women has been put at the bottom of the totem pole in our value, but she was the first rejected. She was the first hidden. She was the first forgotten. As we adopted into a world that only can see the father and son, but we're holistic people. We have to honor a full royal family, not just father and son. Mama and daughter, they're internal, they're ancient, they're subconscious. Father spirit and mama soul has to come into balance for us to become whole or holistic. No one is higher or lower than the other. It has to be an equal balance. So let's stop arguing about who is better. It's balance. That's the key to the universe, balance. And so then we get to the end of the video. Did I say Marvin was in the beginning? You heard his song, first thing, when the video started up. Then you heard him when he says, I want you. He, he did that role through Kendrick and he did it through Will Smith on the physical half. I want you. And his and that is when um, he comes in in the middle. How does he come in in the end? The very last words that Kendrick says is, I want you. That's the very last words he says on the video. I want you. And then guess what? He holds up his hand in the shape of an M. And anytime you're dealing with spirit, you're dealing with um, a combination. It's not just one thing. So the M, first off, I could say stands for mama. We could stand for Marvin. And it could stand for, you know, um, whatever you can symbolically attach to the meaning of what that M could be indicating. But it was no accident it came out on Mother's Day. Then we have the father through the spiritual energy of Marvin, and we have the son through the physical energy of Kendrick. So the mama, the father, and the son comes together to raise the fallen daughter. I want you. I don't know what went wrong, but I'm gonna fix what went wrong and I'm gonna carry you back home, tenderly back home. Just stay with me. That's what he says in the song Chained in front of everybody. That's what he says to her in the song Chained. And then if you go to the song, uh, I want you. You don't want me now. He said, it's so sad. You don't want me now. But I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way. 
I'm going to find a way to change your mind some way, somehow. Who is he talking to? Talking to the fallen daughter. Talking to the woman that has been rejected in her value. He's talking to the woman that was put at the bottom of the totem pole in this physical illusion in her value. And the earth element represents value. But she has now been redeemed. She has now been lifted up and she has now completed us as a star system. And that is why she can now go into marriage with the Nubis of the Sirius star system. So we can balance star systems, our ancient power with the new age power. And this is this energy that will reverberate throughout the cosmos. And the other thing I wanted to tell you about that is I have been noticing all of these people, these men going through, uh, these creative men, uh, high profile celebrity men going through that Aries gateway. And what I mean by Aries gateway from Aries to Taurus to Gemini, they were really going through that Taurus gateway. Uh, people like, um, I think Mama Ali, Nipsey went through that gateway. Uh, my son went through that gateway. I know he's not a celebrity, but he went through that gateway. Many others that went through that gateway. I think um, uh, Prince, um, and I kept asking my spirit, why is that? What does that mean? Why is that happening? And it never answered me until the last one went through the gateway. And that last one who went through the gateway was DMX. He went through that gateway from Aries through Gemini. And that is when I got my answer from spirit. They said that uh, DMX had a propensity for dogs. So that's when I got my answer. They said he was the last one to complete the battalion, but battalion. I know I'm not saying that battalion. There we go. Um, these were warrior souls going through that gateway and they were being equipped and armored on Sirius, the dog star. They were being armored on the dog star to come in to wage this spiritual warfare. The next time we went into Aries energy, which we've already gone through, because Aries is the first sign in the physical half of the astrological cycle, new beginning in a spiritual warfare. And that is why that video, Kendrick video, came out in this gateway because it's indicating those warriors now waging the spiritual warfare from the dog star to turn this around, to embrace the physical family, give them their hug, step them up to their powers and balance spiritual and balance with the physical, stepping up to the tremendous creative powers and fulfill our purpose and our destiny. All this has been leading toward us fulfilling this purpose and this destiny. Because I'm gonna tell you something, when we hit cancer, the cardinal water, the queen, this masculine, this Aries, Taurus, and Gemini opened up the vibration, brought the energy here to the physical level, spiritually. However, when it gets passed to the next domain from Cancer to Leo to Virgo, now we're in uh, the Queen's domain, Mama at, a, at that level, at an energy level. Remember, there's many, many levels. You'll see a different face depending on what level you're looking at. So now we're looking at the mama level, you know, through cancer energy, uh, who represents Kali Ma. Y'all know who Kali Ma is. A ferocious mama. 
She's the one who is crouched down and she wears a a uh, necklace of skulls and she has a blade between her teeth, blood dripping down. The ferocious and vicious mama who's very, very ferocious about protecting her ancient universal melanated family. Mama don't play, she don't compromise. That's father's role to compromise. He's the one who negotiates, makes agreements through the air element. Can't we all just get along? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that mama's half is about, you know, not compromising, no flexing on that. She like homie the clown. Mama don't play. You're going to represent her. She told me you're going to represent me as I would be represented. And that's no mealy mouth walking on eggshell type of bullshit. She's the sovereignty of the royal family. And when you are ordained by Big Mama, you better act like you know it or she'll let you know about it. So don't step up there playing. Don't step up there playing. That's why you can't get through that Gemini gateway to her until you come through for real. Because she don't play. Like Bobby Hammond said, the crocodile. The only one that's going to F you up without mercy. You can play with a lion if it's not hungry. You can escape. You can swim with a shark if it don't smell blood. You can escape again. The only one who is going to F you up without mercy is the crocodile, the image of the great mama. That's how vicious and ferocious she is about protecting her royal family. But it's a fourfold family. Got father and son and mama and daughter. And they unfold from mama to son and then from father to daughter. That's how they unfold in their energy. You know, dual balance of opposites. So I pretty much think I covered everything I wanted to cover. So if we want to go ahead and go to question and answer now, we can do that. Peace, Sister Myra. Wow. Thank you so much for, for your time, for your energy. What I want to do really quick is um, if you want to take a break to stretch your legs, get some water, you can yeah. go ahead and do that. And then mm -hmm. we'll come back for q &A. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. That's All right. right. Perfect. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. I hope that you all um, took some good notes for about the first hour and a half. Um, Sister Myra went over a lesson that she has... Um, broken down a few times. She's been breaking this down for the past 20 years, okay? So I definitely want you guys to rewatch that. Make sure you take notes on that before she got into the, the Kendrick Lamar breakdown. The importance of that is because this is what is happening on the spiritual realm and you need to understand this. Like she said, it's time out for the debates on, you know, Sidereo versus Western astrology and the calendar and all that stuff. We read energy. We are reading spiritual energy. Like she said a couple of times, I don't know if you guys saw it, but she was channeling heavily, channeling heavy information. So I hope you guys were able to catch that and understand this. You know, we're not here for entertainment. She's not here to entertain you, to make you laugh or, oh, she's going to decode the Kendrick Lamar's video. Like this is real truth. This is what is actually happening on the spiritual realm. And you need to know this. You need to know this information so you know how to move, okay? So we're gonna do a, a Q&A. Um, we're gonna take a couple of questions because she was teaching for three hours. Before we started, she asked about a time frame, And you know me, I'm like, Sister Myra, you had to teach. I want you to flow. I'm not putting no restrictions on you. If, you know, if we hear, you know, three, four, five, six hours, that's just what we're going to do. Whoever's meant to hear this message will hear this message. Who's ever meant to receive it will receive it as it resonates with them. So before we get, um, come back to Sister Myra, I do want to go over um, a few things. Number one, I'm going to go ahead and put her um, website and cash app. A few people asked for her cash app. This is her cash app on the screen. 
let me change this so you guys can see it clearly. There we go. So her cash app is dollar sign Myra, M-Y-R-A, M-O-S-S-813, okay? This is one of our master teachers that we still have here with us. It is important that we honor our master teachers. I remember saying like, you know, our master teachers shouldn't have to ask for nothing. They shouldn't have to need for nothing. They shouldn't have to want for nothing, okay? So if you if it resonates with you, if you feel in your heart, if you have to give, please donate to Sister Myra. She didn't ask for nothing. She was like, I have to get this message out. Again, she um, tried to get the message out to as many people on Friday. YouTube was doing the most. And she said, Melanie, we have to get it out to more people. So this is why we are here tonight. Make sure you are liking this video. Make sure you are honoring her, sending her energy, sending her love, okay? Empowering her, okay? And if you have it, you can donate to her. This is her cash app right here. I'm also going to um, post her website. Her website is right here, sistarmyra.com. Please visit her website. You can purchase her book. A Perfect Reflection, which is an amazing book. It talks about the universal cosmic family, more specifically the twin soul, which we need to fully understand that dynamic at this time. Um, you can also go to her website for to book a consultation um, with her as well. So again, this is her website, sistermyra.com, and I'll post her um, cash app again for you all. Myra Moss 813. A few things that she mentioned that I just want to go over. You know, you know me, guys. I say take notes, take notes. Okay. You don't want to wait 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years from now. I'm like, man, I wish I would have taken notes. I wish I would listen to Sister Myra back when she was speaking. Um, the few things. Number one, I want to say make sure you rewatch and un again understand the first part of the video, the first half on what she was speaking of. Don't just be sitting there listening like, oh, Aries, um, you know, the creative ruler, Leo, Aquarius. Really understand that. Really understand that. She showed you. This is my first time seeing that she showed you what the star, the sky looked like. She showed you the star of David. She showed you on the piece of paper. This is not something that she's making up. This is truth. She's speaking from a truth place. So again, make sure you take notes. Rewatch, take, take notes on the first half of the video. Watch the Kendrick Lamar's video, okay? Don't just take her word for it. Watch it and see what, what resonates with you. See the breakdown yourself. Listen to the I Want You song, um, I Want You by Marvin Gaye, just like she instructed. Um, the next thing is she also instructed you all to listen to Chained, Marvin Gaye's Chained um, song that he did in the Playboy Mansion. So make sure you watch the actual video that she spoke of and you'll see what she was referring to. Um, the other thing she mentioned was the movie Flight. And she also mentioned mo movies Matrix 1 and 2. So with that said, if you have questions, if you have questions pertaining to what Sister Myra spoke about tonight, okay, she, pertaining to this, okay, um, please put question marks in front of your questions and I will um, uh, call on you accordingly. Let's see. Sister Myra, are you ready? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, there we go, Sister Myra, we're back. So let's see, I don't, actually don't see any, let's see. So let me, let me say this, Sister Myra has done many videos in the last two years, okay? She get, she's given a lot of information. So make sure that you're asking questions pertaining to this. If you did not, not watch her previous videos, please watch those videos, okay? This is why she does them, all right? Um... Let's see. I'm going to post the question for you, Sister Myra. Okay. okay. I'm going to wow. take myself off the screen. You guys are tearing up my phone. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I'm just, you know, I love my family. I love my family. You guys just don't know how wonderful you are. You really don't. 
but I'm here to tell you. <laughs> okay, do you want me just to read it um, and answer it? Uh, Melanie? Okay, I'll read it. It says, could you please ask how we can connect with mama? Okay. Uh, earth and water, uh, feminine is internal. So the water represents mama and the earth represents the daughter. Those are internal. Daughter represents your security, being secure from within and water represents your emotional happiness. Um, that's too big of a burden to put on anyone's shoulders outside of yourself, um, your security and your emotional happiness. So mama speaks to you internally. Where father speaks to you external through the mind or how you think, mama speaks to you internally through the water or how you feel. And she's going to speak to you through your ancient memory. So when mama speaks to me, it's always a subtle internal voice. Um, if you're not totally still, you might miss it, you know, and usually it's after like, say, okay, let's say you have an issue and you've tied everything, you know, and you can't, um, you know, resolve the issue. That's who I go to as last resort is mama. When I can't figure it out anymore, when there's nothing else I know to do. Then is when I go snibbling and crying to big mama. Mama, mama, I done tried everything I know and nothing else is working. I don't know what else to do, mama. What can I do? And it's at that point you will hear that subtle voice. If you're listening internally, you'll hear that subtle voice. And she always says to me something like, <clears throat> watch this, child. Or let mama show you how it's done. Or just watch this. And then the next thing I know, here comes a solution to my problem. <clears throat> and usually it could be, it will be something I could have never thought of or figured out. That's how you know, that's when you're interacting with mama. She talks to you through your feelings. But she also talks to you through your ancient memory. You know, so when we deal with our ancestors, we're dealing with big mama. You see, uh, so anything hidden, uh, anything occult, anything magical, anything ancient is when you're getting information from Big Mama. Um, but like I said, each one of us has to do our own uh, relationship with her. You know, Mama love each and every one of her children in a special way, you know, and Big Mama is the same way, um, you know, but you have to turn to her. You have to turn to her and she's not going to let you straddle the fence. That means you have to complete, you know, fathers have. What do I know? What, you know, is there anything else I know I can figure out to do? And when you've reached that level, that is when you cross over to her half, you know. And um, like I said, just talk to her intern. Just talk to her like you would talk to your mama. But a mama that's uh, the ultimate mama who can work magic for you, you know, uh, you talk to her. Remember, they said uh, what sort of parent would give their child a stone when they ask for bread. You know, she just wants to be acknowledged. She's been hidden. She's been ignored. She's internal. We've only been dealing with father and son. That's all we've been giving all the credit to. So, she just want to know she's being recognized. And when you give her recognition by turning to her and letting her know, I've done everything I can do in father's domain, which is what I know, what I can figure out, my logic and reason. When you get beyond those things, that's when you turn to big mama and then let her show you how she responds because she will respond. And she'll respond in a way where you'll know that it was nothing you could have done for yourself. Like I said, the energy of big mama, me, mama means I take care of your needs beyond your capability. And we got that from our physical mama. Now we can get it from our cosmic mama. 
That means there's no limits to what we can accomplish if we trust, embrace her in faith and trust, if we trust her. But she is the one that is the ultimate, the, 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 um, you know, like I said, the magical, she opens up the magic of the universe to our disposal. Father brings us spiritual power and mama brings us the magic of the universe. They need to work together. So that means you have to do all you know, all you can figure out, all you know, all you understand, you can understand to do. And when you've reached that maximum, now it's outside of your uh, purview. Now it's time for you to turn to Big Mama. And when you turn to her, when you reach that point, she is not going to let you down. She is going to be, uh, she's going to, she's like, you know, I talked about that waving balloon, the clown with the arms and the wind and the, you know, mama's the same way. She's up there in the universe going, hey, hey, I'm here. I'm ready to show you some things. You just got to give me a chance. Give me a chance. Acknowledge me. See me. And I'll show you how we can make our connection in our relationship, you see. And those who came in here physically um, sacrificing their physical parents, you know, since the universe is about balance, all the more you will receive from your spiritual parents, you see. So if you only got a little from your physical mama, that's just as much as you'll be able to get back from the cosmic mama. Um, you know, if you got a lot from your physical mama, then, you know, um, you don't need as much from the cosmic mama as far as, um, you know, in your fulfillment. Uh, all this is about fulfillment is going from one end to the opposite end, from the individual physical vessel to the universal collective universal energy of mama universe. So sp speak to her from within. She talks to you through how you feel the water. And she talks to you through antiquity. So if you get an ancestor showing up in your dreams, you know, if you get a, a grandfather coming to you in your dreams, he's more than likely he's sent there by mama. You know, anybody that deals with the ancestors is coming in for the sake of mama. Like I said, mama tells us where we came from, our ancient lineage, and father tells us where we're headed how to move forward and fulfill our spiritual purpose and destiny. So knowing who to go to, you know, when you're uh, trying to figure out um, what you want done, you know, understanding what aspect will best serve that purpose, you know, and then that's who you turn to and then let them show you, you know, how they will respond to you. So that's it on that one. How do we rise up as daughters? Um, <clears throat> we have to heal in our security, uh, being secure from within. You know, we are the high priestesses of the universe. Um, I say Neil wouldn't have been able to come out of the matrix if he didn't have a trinity. We are the high priestesses. And when we're operating at the physical level, it's us who has to set standards and challenge our men to rise to meet those standards in order to claim the love of the high priestess. That's his resurrection. So whatever your standards are for him to validate that he uh, cares about what you feel. Now, that leads me to another um, story that I had mentioned before. And I forgot about that. I want to mention now. And it talks about, um, you know, we have to become secure. That's the answer. We have to become secure enough to challenge our men. That is what I wrote in the book. You know, men were built for challenges. You know, that's their forte. But they made the women too insecure to put them to the challenge. You see, putting us at the bottom of the totem pole in our value. So as high priestess, we are the ones who have to challenge our men, you know, by setting standards uh, and make them rise to meet those standards in order to claim the love of the high priestess. And as he rise to meet those standards, that's his resurrection. It resurrects him out of his ego. And that's when he is released from the matrix. He can't come out of the matrix in ego. 
And when he's released from the matrix, only then does he get a perspective of who she is as the high priestess. And that is when he will be the one to redeem and lift you up in your value by validating that he's he's risen to the standards that you set for him, you know, uh, to gain your love. So when he validates that he has risen to the standards that you challenged him to rise to, to gain your love, that is when he becomes the redeemer and redeems you and lifts you up in your value as the high priestess, you see. And that's when the ultimate son of power becomes equal to uh, daughter character. And that's how that energy is fulfilled at the highest level. We're the individual aspects of that. So becoming secure from within in your own value, understand who you are as high priestess from a universal perspective or the princess from the universal uh, perspective. But the thing is, <clears throat> what I forgot to mention is the fact that women, we don't ask men what we, they do for us. You don't ask a man what will he do for you? Because men are masters of logic and reason, the air element, the masculine. They are the masters of logic and reason. That's their forte. So you can come up with a thousand reasons why, and they know they can come up with a thousand and one reasons why not. <laughs> so the, the Where I got this premise at is a movie I went to watch. Spirit told me, go see this movie. This is when I was living in Atlanta. And it said, go see this movie. And I'm like, why do I want to go see that movie? But I went and saw the movie. And it was about the ancient, the olden days. And it was about these knights that were in competition. They were doing a jousting competition. And um, they would go from, you know, kingdom to kingdom in these jousting co competitions. And when they come to this one kingdom, there was this page who um, all the men wanted her hand, you know, all the men liked her. So they would come to her and say, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to win this jousting contest for you. That's how much I care about you. And she would yawn in their face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'll go out there and win it for your damn self. <clears throat> so when the one she liked came to her with that same spill, I'm going to go out here and win this jousting contest for you. She said, okay. She said, if you really want to prove your love, go out and lose the contest for me. And he's like, lose? She said, yeah, lose. So he said, lose? So he went out there grumbling, upset, but he did lose until she sent her hand servant to tell him he could start winning. So after the contest, he goes back to his tent, weary and bruised. Now all he wants to do is get in his tent and lay down. But guess who shows up at the door to come and kiss those wounds and soothe those bruises. So the, the moral of the story, don't ask what don't ask your man what will he do for you. Ask your man what will he sacrifice for you. That takes away all the excuses. Men are masters of rationalization and justification as to what to do with their passion power. So that takes away all the rationalization and justification and excuses, because if he's not willing to sacrifice whatever it takes to gain your love, then he's not the one for you. So ask the man what we sacrifice for you, not what he would do for you. That's when you're secure in your value to your man. And your man takes his tone from you. If you're insecure about who you are in the relationship, he's insecure about it. If you're secure about who you are in the relationship with him, he's secure about it. So when you challenge him, you're telling him, I expect you to be all the man I need. I'm not going to accept you as a little boy 
in his ego. And that's what brings him, that's what pokes his chest, chest out. My woman's tough. Can't just any Tom, Dick, and Harry get to her. You know, um, she has standards. And I was the only one that could meet those standards. I was the only one that could gain that high priestess hand and her love because I could rise to the standards she needed as a high priestess to feel secure and valued and validated through what she feels in the relationship. We are earth and water. You know, we bring feelings to the table. They bring logic and reason. So they have to prove to us, you know, that they uh, value what we feel. And that's how they do it, you see. So uh, they have to prove they value your feelings, that they value the fact that you feel secure and validated in that relationship with them because they've proven it to you. That is when they uh, feel their power. That's when their chest goes out. And that's when you become the high priestess in their eyes. You see, they tell you a man will climb every mountain, swim every sea. The Bible tells you a man will find a precious pearl and give up everything he has to keep it. They're not lying, but he has to first recognize you as a precious pearl. And he's not going to recognize you as a precious pearl till you first recognize yourself as that precious pearl. When you give in to um, what he wants over what you feel, you know, that's all you're telling him. I care more about what you care about, about what you uh, think than what I feel. And he's going to go bet, you know, he's a creature of logic and reason. He's going to say, okay, that, that, that works, you know, through his logic and reason. And he'll go with that until somebody challenges him to see the value of who she is in order for him to see her value as well. So being secure, that is how we, um, you know, that's what we have to do. We have to be uh, secure in our value to our men and do not compromise that. Set standards, you see. And don't compromise those standards as high priestess. And that's when he'll see your value. And that's when he'll do whatever it takes to claim that love and show you that he values you. Men don't keep compete for women. They compete with other men for women. And when you see, when he sees that you know your value, then he's going to see that other men is going to see that too. And that's when he'll get on the stick. Okay. Do you think Kendrick Lamar knows that he's channeling? Of course he knows. <laughs> Why would he use Marvin Gaye's song? <laughs> and, and, you know, see, he used Marvin Gaye as his theme song, which is the theme of his message. <laughs> yes. Now, I never knew Kendrick before uh, this, but I've heard now, you know, now that I went out and listened to all these and, and from what I hear about him, he's always been a deep individual. He's always been someone who did layers in his messages. I mean, they have always said that he was very high level when it came to uh, information he, he, he put out there. So um, my estimation is that, um, you know, he is a vessel, a big mama. Uh, and like I said, Gemini, that's the master channeler, you know, so... Um, Gemini's, you know, um, uh, they may even take it for granted the way they channel because it's so easy for them. That's their forte is to channel. So if he's a musician and the musicians are our highest agents because everything is about harmonizing energy vibrations. And it was our uh, musicians that are the best at harmonizing uh, energy vibrations and as much as you can harmonize those vibrations is as high as you can access in the universe and as high as you can access in the universe is as high as it'll come back uh if you'll if you look at marvin's songs he's he did a lot of self-fulfilling prophecies in his songs all his songs that he put out there ended up coming back around and becoming true and that's what the musicians do They'll send out that vibration to a high level and then it'll come back 
uh, in return from that high level. So what they're energizing is what they're uh, is what they're manifesting. You see, so I, I uh, you know I can't say for sure. I'm not in Kendrick's head, but he seems like a spiritual man. Um, he seems like he knows what he's doing. Uh, and um, I would not doubt that he uh, knows he's channeling. Um, as far as know he's channeling Marvin Gaye, yes, I think he would know that because that is why he used that as his theme. But he did it in a code. It wasn't meant for everybody to see. Those who have eyes, let them see, and those who have ears, let them hear. This message isn't meant for everybody. It's only meant for those who can break the code, and the code was Marvin Gaye. If you didn't see Marvin Gaye, you didn't see the meaning. You didn't see the message. So you had to break the code, and you had to recognize the theme of the message was dealing with the song, I Want You. And when you looked at the song, I Want You, then that tells you everything that it's about. That's it. Can we take back this world universe we're living in without war, uh, physical war? Oh yeah, we're going to do it on a spiritual warfare. I told you that the warriors are already this video with Kendrick is of the first shot in this spiritual warfare. Right now, it, it, it's not even physical. We put too much emphasis on the physical because this has nothing to do with the physical. Right now, we're in a, this is a warfare between spirits, principalities, dominions. This is a high level warfare. The physical is only the vessels that manifests the energy of the warfare. So, um, um, no, the, the, like I told you, they're, they're crying war right now, and I don't believe it. I don't believe anything they're putting out right now. I told you, all the systems of the world are corrupted. The educational system, the news, media, social justice, uh, educational system, medical system, political system, every system you can name is compromised at this time. You can't believe anything. Everything they're telling you right now is to distract you from stepping up to tapping into the energy that's coming in from the universe. There's divine intervention going on right now. We've been under the auspices as our parents, uh, the Ma of terror, materialism, the Ma of tricks, the matrix, and the father of illusion. And it's now time for us to connect to our true parents, uh, Righteous Father Spirit and Mama Universe. And they are doing divine intervention. But like I said, we all get our blessings through Jupiter, which is a very optimistic energy. And if you're not up there to tap into that energy, then you're going right up under it. And then you are vulnerable to the attack of the physical. Uh, so I don't believe anything that they're telling you is really happening. We're in the land of illusion. Um, and if they are happening, they were scripted to happen because they wanted to serve a purpose below. They wanted you to argue details, okay? So um, we wanna do gun control. So let's go have somebody go in and shoot up a bunch of people so we can say, now we need to pass the law for gun control. And then we get into argument or debate about whether or not, you know, <clears throat> we want the, uh, you know, the freedom of our weapons or we want to take the guns away. So now we're debating that issue um, when, if you remember in the movie The Matrix, when uh, Neil asked Morpheus, are you trying to say I'll be able to dodge bullets? And Morpheus said, I'm saying you won't have to. So we won't have to we won't have to cooperate with a physical warfare if we know that's just the illusion and that our power and our warfare is being waged from a spiritual level and we can't lose with what we have to use. Okay? So that's it.
All right, Sister Myra, would you like to take one more question or how are you feeling? One more? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I, I can't yeah, I do three more. Oh, three more? Yeah, uh -huh. I'll do three. Okay, perfect. All right, let me post the next one up. Can you have a soul twin relationship with someone who's crossed over? I've been contacted through my dreams twice. Most definitely. That is the, um, that is definitely, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. So it gives me a chance to tell you, um, see, just like this Kendrick video, that's the same way I am about the matrix. I think there's a wealth of information there. And they, covered this in The Matrix. This was the second movie, The Matrix. And in the second movie, The Matrix, they had, uh, they were in Zion and they were in this dance, this twin soul dance. You guys remember that? It was really, really um, passionate. They were jumping around and hair shaking, sweat flying everywhere. You know, um, and in the background was Trinity and Neil making love. So what that represented was the physical twin souls versus the um, twin souls when it comes to one being in spirit and one being in the physical. Like I told you, the balance of opposites and the ultimate balance is the spiritual between the physical and um, so the feminine is usually the one at the physical level because they represents uh, manifestation, materialization, and the masculine represents the spiritual. So the spiritual coming in balance with the uh, feminine um, uh, physical uh, manifestation. Uh, yes, um, that's just another level of the balance between the twin souls. So it represented the physical twin souls in their dance when the collective energy of the twin souls was represented through Trinity and Neil. Uh, and the feminine, remember the sphinx, um, the, the son and the daughter through the sphinx, uh, the, uh, the head of the woman, Virgo. Virgo is an earth sign. So that can be inferred as the, the physicality you know, the feminine and then the masculinity of the the fire or the, um, you know, the lion or Leo. So, um, yes, there can be a twin soul connection between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. Um, because this is somebody you've been with through many, many lifetimes. And uh, like I said, in some lifetimes you had to come together unequally as mother and son. Some lifetimes you had to come together as father and daughter. But this is the last, this is the lifetime where we come together as brother and sister, which is the mate level or the yin yang level. Uh, so um, this is somebody you've been with as energy being. And when you fell into the flesh, you separated into duality, male and female. You've had many, many lifetimes cultivating a love relationship with that person. But there's sometimes you, you know, you're going to miss that connection at the physical level, but it doesn't uh, disconnect your connection uh, to each other um, spiritually. So, um, um, oh, most definitely. I'm, 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 a, I'm giving more and more readings where um, this scenario is uh, cropping up or popping up where uh, their twin soul has already made their transition, but because you're connected energy wise, um, that hasn't um, disconnected your union. Um, it uh, has, um, it hasn't disconnected your union, um, you know, and, um, and right now is the time for those to become more and more evident. So most definitely. That's just another level of the twin souls uh, versus the physical to physical. There's three levels we have to connect. We have to connect spirit to spirit. We have to connect physical to physical, and then the last, and and then we have and we have to connect physical to spiritual. We have to connect on all three of those levels in order for it to be a holistic relationship. So 
most definitely you can have a relationship with a twin soul who has made their transition. Next question. How does the current energy and being in Gemini correspond with the twin flame uh, relationships? You know, that's an interesting question because when, in the Tarot deck, um, the lover's card of the major arcana card is Gemini energy in the Tarot deck. And when I told you the first quarter of the astrological cycle, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, and I said uh, the warrior who defends the value, Taurus, of, well, I said seeing through the illusion, but like I said, when you're dealing with spirit, there's a combination of meanings, you know? You can't stick to just one meaning. That's physical. Anytime you take it individual, that's physical. Spirit is a collective. It's always going to be more than one meaning behind it. Like I said, it depends on what level you're looking at that energy as to what face is going to show. So another definition of that Aries, Taurus, and Gemini is a warrior who defends the value of his twin mate, which is still the message that Kendrick was putting out, that it's time for our men to redeem the value of their women. You see, so that is why this energy showed up in that uh, gateway, because it is about the men putting out the vibration. It's time to redeem the value of our twin, our mate, our equal, our, opposite, our equal reflection. That's who their twin soul is, your equal reflection. But we're talking energy-wise, you know, not so much physical, energy-wise. Somebody who's vibrating at the same level you're vibrating at in your energy, you know, and some, you know, so, um, yeah, that, uh, that Gemini is definitely the lover's card in the major arcanas. And it is about the twin souls, the first quarter where the man or the warrior stands up and defends the value of his twin reflection. That's that answer. Are we at a point now where we no longer have to heal through suffering? Most definitely. Um, we're getting our healing from, um, from the universal level, you see. When, uh, um, Nipty, when, Nipsey, when Nipsey said, um, when, okay, let's go back. When Kendrick starts off the video, he's hugging himself. Then when we go to Kendrick, when he first uh, channels Marvin and he says, um, I want you, I want a hug, look what I've done for you. Um, you know, and then Will Smith does it as well. Um, all the way out to Nipsey saying it, uh, I don't have to be in the flesh to hug you. All this, these hugs are really symbolic of healing being healed as we come into balance, as we come into uh, an embrace of one another. Uh, these are the wounds he's talking about healing, uh, the wounds that have separated us as twin souls. It's not until we come together in balance and equally as twin souls as the yin and the yang. Anytime the yin and the yang comes together in balance, that's the point of our evolution. Everything steps up to the next level. So the hug is the symbolism uh, for healing. I want my healing. I want my hug from my woman, you know, so we can come together and balance, you know, and heal and step up to a new level in our power. So uh, that's what the hug is symbolic of in that video is um, the healing of the relationship between uh, the twin souls. And guess who's going to be responsible for that? <clears throat> That's going to be Big Mama. Earth and water. You know, those are internal. And Earth deals with our healing. The Earth, daughter Earth, is the one who is the energy of healing. That is why she is the one who has to challenge her man to rise 
to meet the standards to claim, claim her love because his wounding is his ego. And she has to challenge him to resurrect by rising to the standards that she sets to claim the love of the high priestess. And as he rise to claim those stand those um as he rise to meet those standards, that's what's um resurrecting him from his ego where he's been wounded. And that is what heals that ego wound, you know. And by her challenging him and putting him to the challenge, that means she's already came to her security about herself as the high priestess in order for her to put that challenge to her man. And those are the two wounds that needs to be healed. Uh, she has to come back into the security of her worth. She has to see herself as the princess and the high priestess from a universal perspective, not take into account um, being put at the bottom of degradation in her value. Um, you know, that is what she has to heal from. And then that's how she then induces him to heal from his ego wounding. So that's how the healing is going to occur. Thank you so much, Sister Myra. Um, do you have any closing words? Hey family, this is it. We're here. You just gotta embrace this because the most profound thing that was shown was when Dipsy said from the spiritual perspective, I don't have to be in the flesh to hug you. It's time for us to get our spiritual hug. That means it's time for us to come into balance with the spiritual half. And just like I read you, that includes mama, uh, the father and the son. And all they're waiting is for the fallen daughter, you know, to join the mix. Like I said, once we complete um, uh, that healing daughter earth becomes uh, a sacred planet then that brings us to the level of a star system. And that's how she can, we can now go into balance with the uh, star system, Sirius, our ancient star system. And this is how this energy will reverberate throughout the cosmos. Co um, Kendrick put us on notice that this is where we're at right now. This is here, this is where we're at. He did, he put it out on Mother's Day for a reason. This is where we're at. So, yes, let's get busy, honey. Let's, let's open our arms and receive our embrace, you know, from Mama Universe through Father Spirit, you know, as our sons comes back to, you know, uh, come back to us um, and woo us back. Like Marvin said, I don't, he said, it's so sad. You don't want me now but I'm going to change your mind some way and somehow. And that's why Kendrick used that song and Marvin to deliver that message. They want us back. The last thing I want to say is speaking in behalf of womb of man, we want you to, men, we want you to. Okay, that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Myra. It has been four hours exactly to the minute. That's what so I said I wasn't going to do. See, that's how spirit works. When that's you say you right. don't want something, it'll bring you that just to show you the opposite. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it felt good. It felt good. It felt good. Again, thank you so much. I, I know I speak for everyone here. We appreciate your time, your energy, your sharing, your knowing, your channeling, all of that. We're so very grateful to you. Um, Does that, that bother you? Do you really feel what I'm saying is the truth? Do you really feel it? Absolutely. Everything resonates right. as absolute truth. And the way that you break it down, what I love about it is that you bring in the science aspect, like you bring in the astrology and, you know, different perspectives. You know, I would say truth is truth and you presented yes. that to us today. Beautiful. So, yes. Thank you All so right. much. Love you. Love you, family. Love you, Melanie. Hey, I, I love you, Tiffany. I ain't forgot about you. So, yes, um, you. you know, but. 
I love my family. And let's get busy. Let's heal this family. Let's step up. We are the yin and the yang. We can't evolve till we come together, you know, in love for one another. Uh, you look over all Marvin's songs. All you got to do is look at the titles. They're all about love and they're all about social justice, you see. So uh, start indulging in his songs and his message. And, you know, and that's how we're getting instructed on how we need to, you know, heal our relationship. So bye-bye, you Absolutely. guys. Thank you again. Uh, Peace. Good night, everyone. Yeah. <laughs>